Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Any% NMS 2024 tournament. Uh, today, we've got a match between Etiquette, King Trubs, and Alwell. My name is New Amber, and with me commentating, uh, if you want to introduce yourselves. Sure thing. I am Poketax Attorney, but you can call me Poketax. Hi, I'm Greta. I was here a couple nights ago, and now I'm here again. Hello. Thank you, thank you. Uh, really exciting race today. Um, I guess we can go through uh, the runners that are racing today uh, here first. So first of all, from pot one, we have Etiquette. I feel like he needs no introduction. I mean, just one of the most influential, one of the probably the longest running person of this game, was running this game day one. Running all the way today, always been a top runner of this game. And yeah, really excited for to see him play today. Um uh, next we've got King Trubs. King Trubs, aka Matt. Uh he's been running this game for I believe a, a couple of years now. Uh was part of last year's tournament and has come back again. And finally, the last one we got is Alvo, who uh, hasn't run much like Let's Go. Uh, he learned it for this tournament, but is a longtime uh, DS Pokemon speedrunner and has been quickly learning and improving at this game. So I'm excited to see how uh, how much improvement he's uh, had. No, no PB submitted for Allo yet, but you know what that means. That means we're going to get a PB here today. So looking forward to a great race. It's going to be a, this should be a good one. Um, so. I know the racers are now getting ready. We're getting synced up. Uh, we should be starting here any second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got two Eevees here today. Uh, from Attica and Alo, and then a Pika. Attica and Krubs, and then Pika from Alo. And it looks yeah. like our so runners are I guess off. Just to... oh, go ahead. Yep. So just to get started, kind of the background of this game. Uh, so this is a remake of, I guess this would be Pokemon Yellow. Uh, the original games came out in 1996. This one came out in 2018. Uh, but this is very different speed run from a lot of the other uh, a lot of the other speed runs you might be familiar with if you watched other Pokemon speed runs. Uh, there's a much heavier emphasis on catching in this one. Um, you'll see that there are various gym requirements in order to get into gyms, and the kind of gating one in this game is that. You need 50 Pokemon for one of the gyms, which is why in everybody's tracker in the top left corner of their of their screen capture, you can see a number out of 50. Um, so that'll be an emphasis of 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 the catching and um, and yeah. You, so it'll be similar to the original games in that you're going and you're beating your gym leaders, but you're also catching Pokemon along. Now, one thing that is very important to me, and I know is very important to Greta, specifically, is uh, what which character model they chose. Uh, we got two boy ones and and one girl one for Matt. What do you think about that, Greta? I think even though Matt is playing on Eevee, I might have to root for him anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I'm beginning to agree boy with that. Boy one technically <laughs> is optimal. <laughs> well... You see, the thing is, <laughs> if you pick the girl, then it's actually optimal because you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> uh, you just see, kind of, everybody just mashed through an introductory scene here. Uh, we're about to get a hold of our first Pokemon, whether it's Eevee for Etiquette or Matt or Pikachu for Aloe. Um, and we'll be seeing that coming up here momentarily uh, as these guys are all going to Professor Oak to to uh, to get their Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So not too much that's interesting uh, right now. I guess the only thing really to mention is on Aloe's screen because he's playing Pika. Uh, we, will, we will be able to see whether the Pikachu is in neutral in nature or not by the uh, combat points in the top right corner once um, he gets into the encounter. So we'll be looking out for that. 
no such distinction for EV. You get 27 CP up. Rogue, rogue Pokeball there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, for those who haven't actually played this game um, and are just watching, um, this game uses Joy-Cons from the Pokemon Switch console. Um, and sometimes Joy-Cons have this little habit of doing what you don't intend them to do. So sometimes you'll see a Pokemon, a Pokeball fly in a completely different direction than what you expected. It's all part of the fun we have here in Pokemon. Let's go. Yeah, looks like Owl got uh, 26 CP, so that means uh, his Pikachu is not a neutral nature, so he will have a 10% um, increase in one of his stats and a 10% decrease in a different stat. Hopefully that decrease is not in attack or special attack. Um, it, minus attack is pretty bad, and minus special attack for Pikachu is not too bad. There's a couple annoying things with that, but it's mostly fine. Yep, and for Eevee, again, it's it's similar. There are a couple of stats that's like you want them to be good, if at all possible. Uh, really, if you're doing PB attempts, you want something that doesn't have minus attack, minus special attack, or minus speed. Uh, but these runners, uh, in fact, you can see Etiquette here is not even checking his nature. Uh, I did not see what King Trubs's was, but he's resetting it, which tells me that it was probably one of those three, that it was one of minus special attack, minus attack, or minus speed. So he's going to go to a backup save. Uh, the rules of this tournament allow you to have a backup save, and that backup save has to be a neutral nature, so he will not have increase in any one of his stats or decrease in one of his stats. It'll just be a straight neutral nature. Yep, I did not uh, see if Alvo checked his nature or not. Uh, I, don't I don't think so. Yeah, I don't believe he did. I don't yeah, believe so. With Pikachu, there's a lot more uh, runnable natures, and even like the unrunnable ones aren't too bad for Pikachu, so... Usually, I think most Pika runners usually just go without looking at their stats uh, in the lab. Yeah, and it's, I mean, pros, cons, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, it takes six seconds to, to look at the nature, roughly, give or take. Um, and that's, it, as we saw from the race this morning, you know, these races can be very, very close. So you're trying to optimize as much as you can. And if you can take looking at your nature out of that, that's six more seconds for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our runners right now are just making it up route one and then uh, delivering the parcel back to Oak. Uh, looks like Etiquette and Owl both had like pretty good route ones. I find with like going up route one, either everything is out of your way and it's super easy or like the like an entire mob of Pokemon oh are your way. Like, like you're sitting <laughs> with like, Matt like, right here. Screen right now, yes. <laughs> um. Great example, right on cue, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amber, you just willed that one into existence, I think. One may call it a commentator's curse. <laughs> Check that off your your bingo if you got that. So Etiquette is now starting the first rival fight. This is a it's a pretty rudimentary fight. You've just got your nice oh, some stat boosted overpowered EV against uh, your rivals. Oh, Etiquette actually just got paralyzed. So we'll see if that and you see he loses a turn there because he could have the full paralysis. Another and actually one. this is another turn. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, and he got growled in there, too, so let's see if he can get this three-shot. He cannot. Uh, so, very slow rival one fight there for Etiquette. Uh, and in terms of just initial pacing, Aloe is right there, not far behind. And King Trubs is, for that matter, even though he had to load a, a new save file. Mm -hmm. So, with the rival one fight, um... On average, the EV fight is faster than the Pikachu fight. Uh, generally, three turns on EV versus four turns on a uh, Pikachu. But on EV, you're at the mercy of both getting growled a bunch and getting paralyzed, like we saw from Etiquette. So um, 
it could become a lot more than four turns for Eevee if you get unlucky. Yeah, that is not the standard Eevee fight by any stretch. I definitely had some pretty bad luck there. It was, what, six turns, and usually it's three. Mm -hmm. um, so, as he's running away from a Pidgey. Uh, so, he's, uh, all the runners now are heading back up Route 1, and we're going to get into the, the, the heart of the run here. Uh, they'll head up towards Radiant Forest, which is more battles and your first uh, catch section of the run. They're right also here. Um... They... Oh, go ahead. Also, as they do that, since we did not see Aloe's stats or Etiquette's stats, um, you're going to see that Aloe levels up here with Pikachu. Uh, we can kind of get a sense of the nature of that. That is oh, plus attack and an attack, an attack AV or. Uh, what is it? Poke, poke power? Then? Go power. <laughs> Go power. That one. That one. Uh, more more uh, items for everyone's bingo card. So Aloe's got a very good Pikachu. Uh, oh, yeah. Because it, it does have plus attack. Plus attack, minus speed, attack AV. That's like the best level up you can get right there. Like. Absolutely. And there's more motion controls from etiquette. The <laughs> ball just flying mm -hmm. in an indescript d d direction. Um, it, it, it's a fun game. It, it, it just makes you laugh that way. Yeah, if you've been running this game kind of for a little bit, you probably know that you generally don't want to catch super low-level Pokemon because then they take a lot of levels to evolve and they don't give as much experience. But um, sometimes you will catch a bug outside of Viridian Forest, and that's because before you enter Viridian Forest, you actually have uh, a boosted catch rate which means uh, the bug outside on Route 2 there is like almost guaranteed to get in the ball no matter what. So by catching it there, uh, you pretty much get like uh, almost guaranteed catch rate and you don't have to take the time to um, raspberry if that's something that you normally do in Viridian Forest. Exactly, yeah. It's a trade-off though, right? Like on one hand, you, you have a much higher catch rate, that's much worse chance of, or much lower chance of breaking out. But you also need to get to level 10 to enter uh, to enter Brock's gym and to be able to have the move double kick. Uh, so I actually did not see what Edda's stats were on his Eevee. I, it, it, he, he hit level six when he was catching. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for what the status on that or what the uh, what the nature on that Eevee is. Um, you know, the, the natures will dictate a lot of the strategy that these runners will use. So it's it's very important to have a have an awareness of what that is. And we did see if Matt's level up just to verify that that uh, EV is a neutral nature, which is a requirement for that backup. So check that and it looks good to me. I'll All go right, ahead looks like this Pidgey fight right now. Uh, Pidgey fight goes great for Pikachu, which is what you saw on Aloe's screen. Uh, it could be a little bit dicier for Eevee because it doesn't one-shot and has this uh, lovely attack called Sand Attack. And uh, Sand Attack is not nice. Fortunately, it looks like Matt did not run into Sand Attack, so that's a pretty simple two-shot for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now uh, Aloe is going to get the lure. Um, Greta, I don't know if you want to explain um, lure mechanics. <laughs> Yeah, so lures are a thing from Pokemon Go. Also, a nice bead roll. <laughs> 1%, by the way. Um, and in this game, they will do very useful things for us. Also, motion controls <laughs> again. Um, All three players have had it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the classic. Um, they'll make Pokemon spawn more often, and they'll also be at a higher level, um, there'll be one level higher than the normal maximum is for the area. And we like that because more experience and because they're closer to when they will be able to evolve. And that saves us time, especially the level ups are really slow in this game. So if we can avoid those, uh, we would like to. I see Etiquette has found a friend. Uh, that he's running on screen there with one of you, the two of you want to talk about uh, 2C mechanics? 
Greta, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and take it. <laughs> okay. So in this game, um, as you're aware, the Switch has two Joy-Cons. And so what you can do in this game is do like co-op mode with the other Joy-Con. Um, but we don't have any friends, so we're just going to do it. <laughs> we're going to use both of them ourselves. And that is really useful because, as you can see here, uh, with the catching, um, you can use both of them at the same time. And while it does have kind of a slow animation, it is very useful because it gives us more experience on our catch and it raises the catch rate. So that is very good for us. Um, breakouts yeah, are slow example. and EXP is good. Good example of that. You, you saw Aloe's uh, Caterpie, his first throw broke out because he, he only had the one C out. Uh, if that's a two C catch, I believe that's a hundred percent catch or close to it. Whereas with a one C, that's a much, much lower catch rate. So you can see the, the advantage of having the two C there. Plus again, as Greta indicated, uh, you get more experience out of it. and. That's one of the big goals of this game, is getting experience and leveling up. Especially as I referenced earlier, uh, for Eevee, you want to be at least level 10 coming out of Viridian Forest. Uh, because at that point you learn the move Double Kick, and as you see Etiquette get a very nice three levels on his Eevee, and you see he's learning Double Kick there right now. Uh, I see minus special attack for Etiquette. I saw plus speed. So okay. I, I guess that's jolly, and which is um not yeah, ideal for Eevee, but I mean it, it could be it could be worse. It could be minus attack. So yeah, it, it as you'll see later, Eevee learns uh, a number of special moves. Um, so for now, he's he'll be perfectly fine. But later, you'll probably see an instance or two that that minus special attack will end up. Will end up hurting a bit. Hmm. So all our runners are generally going to be aiming for to get the Caterpie line, the Weedle line, and then the version exclusive grass type, whether it's Bellsprout on Eevee side or on it on Pika side. As well, Eevee side uh, looking for Pikachu in that four. I know Etiquette got one. Um, I don't think Matt got one, but I didn't actually see it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see him get one. Uh, you can see Matt hitting level 10 there on his EV, so he's also learning Double Kick. Again, very useful against Brock. Obviously, a Rock Gym, you need a fighting move on EV, because otherwise it has a bunch of normal moves, which are not very effective. And you want the, the super effective move to, to inflict more damage there. Mm hmm. Yeah, runners may also opt to either catch a Pidgey or a Rattata. Just getting that extra experience early on um, really helps out. Um, just because you need to hit that um, level 15 before Misty Gym requirement. So um, that extra experience can really come in clutch and make a mood a lot more consistent if you don't get everything Absolutely. that you need there. What? interesting thing that I think Etiquette's been doing for a long time now is um, his move order is like really different than what most EV runners do. So uh, pretty yes. much every, every other EV runner I've seen puts headbutt in slot one and then puts double kick in slot three and then when you get the three special moves put them in two, three, and four. But Etiquette puts double kick in slot one and I believe he does headbutt in four or something like that. Yeah, I saw a quick attack there now. I assume he will teach Headbutt over that. Uh, but yeah, he's been doing that as long as I've watched him play. Uh, it's, hey, it's a, it's a familiarity thing for him. Kind of like in Fuchsia City, where it's like, do you do, go do the gold teeth before or after the gym? It, it's, it's runner's preference, and his preference is to do it that way. So good on him. It works for him. Yeah, what I think happened was that a few years ago, he like... Um, I calculated every single, like, input and move order to try to find the optimal one. Uh, but the problem is that, like, the route has evolved since he did that. And so I think, like, the optimal move order probably changed, but he got too used to what he's doing and just never really changed off of it. All right. So, welcome to Brock's Gym. Um, a little bit of version differences between these, between the two. 
Um, you see Etiquette and Matt getting ready to start up the Brock fight. Uh, they will be using Eevee and the aforementioned double kick on on Brock. Um, Pikachu has a little bit of a cheat code for this gym uh, called Oddish. Oddish is really helpful because uh, it has the grass move Absorb, uh, which is a special grass move, and rock ground types like Geodude and Onyx are four times weak to those moves. Um, and you might ask yourself, well, gee, why doesn't Eevee use uh, Bellsprout, which it usually catches? Uh, well, Bellsprout gets fine with, which is a physical move, and despite being four times effective, um, it's still, because the defense of Geodude and Onyx is so high, it makes more sense to just use the EV. Uh, and that'll actually be a, a pretty common thing throughout this run, is that EV just has such a diverse move pool um, that you'll just be relying on it a lot. And Pikachu tends to be more Pika and friends. Um, and so you're, we're seeing the first instance of it here with Oddish. All three of our runners finishing Brock within, what, about five seconds of each other? Yeah, uh, There are definitely considerations, like, um, Pikachu will definitely be losing a little bit of time to Eevee and Mount Moon. Um, Matt is one Pokemon down of the other two, but still, it's really great to see these runners so close to each other, uh, so far in this race. Alright, I was gonna say, even Aloe, who, again, as we just talked about at the top, does not have a PB submitted. He's he's right there with with Etiquette, who, of course, is one of the elite runners of this game. So, let, let's hope for a, a, a continued close race. This is, this is gonna be fun. Now, for the first major shop of the run, um, there are gonna be three major shops that the runners do, uh, loading up on... Uh, great Balls here, um, X items, uh, s status healing moves. Um, it does bear noting for those who have followed uh, other Pokemon games. Um, so the X items in this game are kind of busted. Um, usually, like an X attack will raise a st the stage of the attack stage by one. Uh, but here, in this game, it raises an attack stage or defense stage or what have you by two instead of just one. And it has the even better benefit of having the cost the same as the games that have uh, only the one stage boost. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for the X items in this game. We will be seeing those used a lot throughout this run. Picking up another lure, we'll be using that in Mount Moon. Yeah, let's see if the runners can get any bonuses on Route 3. Don't see any of them getting yeah, those nothing bonus yet. Pokemon. So Etiquette and, uh, and Matt are looking for an Ekans. Um, which is the bonus available in Eevee. And then Aloe is looking for either a Santru or a Mankey, which is available in Pika, but none of the three got any bonuses. Um, bonuses are really helpful, both for experience and just to get those extra catches. Um, as Etiquette gets just molly whopped by a Zubat um, walking in. I do not want to catch that at this stage, um, but... That's that's this game. You'll just randomly uh, walk into a cave, think you're safe for a little bit, and there comes a Pokemon. Typically you bet. <laughs> Almost always <Yes>. you bet. <laughs> I, oh. I, I feel like I, oh, a Matt sees an Onyx right away. Onyx mm -hmm. is a 1% encounter here in Mount Moon. Mm -hmm. um, it's a level 9, so it should give him a good amount of experience. The issue with Onyx is catching it. Um, as you can see, it's way up high. Its hitbox is pretty hard to hit. Um, so he actually almost got a, what I think would have been a great throw on it, but it just missed the circle there. But he catches it nice. anyway. So that's a really nice bonus there for Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And again, it just gets him that much closer to that level 15 threshold uh, that he needs to, in order to get into Misty's gym. And that actually is a requirement to get into the physical gym. It's not just like with Brock's gym. Oh, it'd be really good to get to level level 10 here for this move. Yeah, the nice thing, even without getting the a circle bonus on that cat, it still gave him like a full level on pretty much all of his Pokemon. As well, that yeah. allowed him to get Beedrill now, which means uh, in this menu that he's about to do, he can just deposit the Beedrill right away. And I can have to worry about it uh, gaining any more levels. Right. And, and again, for those who are newer to this game, getting extra levels, I mean, getting levels on on your main, on Pokemon that you need to evolve, is a good thing, right? But every time you get another level, you'll get a notification that says it goes a little like, doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. and it's that two seconds that, you know, can happen over and over again you're like i don't want these levels on this pokemon so uh amber to your point uh being able to withdraw that beetle right now prevents additional levels that's that's several seconds that he's going to be able to save because of that onyx catch mm -hmm. yep so now uh Etiquette and Owl are about to head into the Moonstone room. This is where generally the majority of your catching is going to be in Mount Moon. Uh, looking for Geodude, uh, Clefairy, and Paris, generally. There's also options for Onyx and uh, Fable and Chansey. Yep, I saw Geodude and Paris on Etiquette screen. Um, and, you know, you, you want definitely want those three uh, the kind of rule that I have is the something pink is, so you want again whether it's Clefairy, Clefable uh, Chansey if you can find it somehow that you know all of those are kind of your your drivers of hey here's here's a bunch of experience for you so uh, that one might be the most important of the three here um so, Atticut's got the other two. Let's see if he can get a third. But it, 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 as Amber was talking about, he's evolving his bugs. So, we'll return to his gameplay in about a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, we're kind of... Oh, on, another Onyx. <laughs> and on, uh, another on Onyx for Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two 1% encounters. Yeah, now we're, we're kind of coming up to that 25-minute mark. Um... Greta, I don't know if you want to kind of explain the, the, the Moonstone stuff right now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there are some items on the ground that we can pick up um, that will respawn or have a chance of respawning um, once the day rolls over at midnight. So before the run, our runners set their Switch's internal clock to be like around 1134 or something like that, um, so that when they get to this point, they can pick up the moonstone and then you know do some do some stuff in here or whatever and hopefully there will be another moonstone there for them and that's just super easy free catch for you to use um to evolve something and get that done but it's like only like a 50 percent ish chance to happen so not something you can count on but it is very good when it does happen and it happened and that was Zedek at getting his second moonstone after, of course, getting blasted by a Zubat, because <laughs> if there's two certainties in this game, it's motion controls happening and Zubats being there at the inopportune time. Um, we also haven't talked about glowing Pokemon, which is um, what Etiquette had there on his screen. Oh. Um, well, Fable and Owl's screen wanna... at the bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, there's oh. a glowing And a glowing Fable. one, too. Holy... Uh, yeah. Uh, so, a uh, good time to talk about it. Glowing Pokemon are either uh, large or small. You, that's so the small ones will have a blue kind of a sparkle around them. Uh, Aloe's using Pokeballs in this Clefable, by the way. Uh, Clefable does not have a great catch rate, so I, you know, if Aloe can whip out those great balls, that might be helpful. Um, so. So small or large Pokemon have a one and a half times experience multiplier, so you can get more experience from them. And there's also anecdotally about a 10% chance that 
they're what are called super size, or you'll hear them called wombo size, uh, which means they're actually extra small or extra large, uh, which is a four times catch multiplier. So those are ones that, that really can give you a lot of experience. Um, again, good and bad. It, you can you get the, the experience on the Pokemon you need, but sometimes it also can get onto Pokemon you don't need having all that experience. Um, like this Beedrill and the Butterfree that's in Aloe's party now. Uh, for example, don't need more experience, but he's also at level 15 on Pikachu. He can get into Misty Skin right now if he wants to. So that's really helpful for, for Aloe. Yeah, now that our runners were kind of leaving the big catching room, let, let's just take a look at their trackers for a bit. So I believe Etiquette just got the standard uh, Clefairy, Paris, and Geodude. Um, Matt got the Onyx, Matt has Geodude, Matt has Clefairy. Does Matt have Paris? Um, I don't think Matt has Paris yet. Matt does not have marked. Paris. He still has it marked, but does not have Paris yet. Mm hmm. And then Owl got the Fable, and let's see, he's gonna be going for that Geodude now. And I believe Owl already has a Paris, or at least has it marked. So yeah, Owl will be good to go. Uh, you just substitute Cliff Fable for Clefairy. Again, you're looking for those three catches. You're looking for, for Geodude, you're looking for Paris, and you're looking for something pink. Uh, which is exactly what Aloe's done here. So, nice job. Was that a... a that was something on Etiquette screen, and it was... Oh. Was that a Chansey? Oh, I missed it. I did not see that. Chad, any insight on that? <laughs> yeah, one thing I want to see also is Matt's experience. Uh, Etiquette and Aloe are pretty good on experience, both at level 15 right now on their mains. Uh, I know Matt is a little bit lower on Pokemon, but did get that uh, Onyx. Looked like Matt is just over level 14, which means he yeah, should he's... barely be good to get into the mission gym without catching anything extra. Yes, I, I, I agree. So now that the catch sections of Mount Moon are, are complete, uh, we've got a few fights that we're running into. Um, we have two of our runners getting blasted by encounters and another Clefable for Aloe. Uh, that's so funny. I don't Clefable. think he's on the chain anymore. He got the Geo dude, I think. So that's just <laughs> another. We, we, we had Aloe getting two Clefables. We had King Krubs getting two Onyxes. The, the 1%s are wild in this race. And we had Etiquette getting blasted by... Uh, uh, you bad at the start. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, I think a good amount of experience for Owl. Owl was going to be very happy. Almost level 17 for the, the uh, Drowsy fight here. Yep. And... Uh, this is a tough one-shot in Pika. Uh, but at almost level 17, it, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling... Trying to he's navigate. brave, too. He's plus attack, so I'm feeling pretty good about that one shot right now. Yeah, that's that's right. So, Etiquette just picked up a uh, fossil. He's heading to Jesse James. Um, any strong opinions from our commentators about Helix and Dome Fossil? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the Helix one word, now. Helix is faster. That's, that's all I've got. That, that, I... Don't fool me too much. I would pick up Dome, but that's only because I always do Pika side Diploma, and you usually pick up Dome on that, so I would just do that. Yeah, I'm a Helix enjoyer myself. I feel like whenever I run a category that has, you have to pick up the Dome Fossil, it's like really hard for me to remember to pick it up. So, since we haven't run into one of these yet, th this is actually the first of the double fights. Uh, we're going up against Jesse and James from from the anime anime series and from Pokemon Yellow. Uh, so you have two Pokemon that are able to come out and and fight against each of Jesse and James' one Pokemon. 
Um, so you were able to see Etiquette actually was able to complete that fight in, in two turns. He used Bellsprout's Acid, which is a spread move, uh, to to do the, the final amount of damage there on Coughing, and simultaneously headbutt the Ekans to one-shot that. So, uh, nice little... Nice little uh, tech there from Etiquette. And now we're into Cerulean City for Etiquette. Onyx for Meanwhile, Aloe, Aloe and, and <laughs> Matt are finishing up, uh, are, are finishing up here in um, Mount Moon. Yeah, one thing to note um, that uh, chat graciously pointed out, even though I didn't see it myself, so thank you, chat. Um, Owl actually didn't uh, switch Pikachu to the front for that uh, Draghi fight. But, um, so it was a little bit tougher for him, but now he's got Pikachu yeah. on the front for the rest of these fights. There you go, yep. And, and that then... just hit level 15 there with, um, with Eevee, so he is able to get into Misty's gym. Um, another thing I just wanted to quickly note there, um, we, we talked about AV's awakening power, or, or, Awakening values or something power again. Um, go power. It's actually go power. Yes, I'm. I'm just gonna get, continue to butcher that on purpose. <laughs> um, somebody's got, I'm sure, the nice long uh, write up on that. And was is posting it in the chat for us. Um, one of the things for EV, it's actually really nice to have at least one speed AV, which Matt just got. Um, and the reason for that is the Pidgeotto fight on Rival 3, if you're at level 19, which is actually very, very common, that fight is a speed tie, and Pidgeotto is a jerk, so it will throw sand at you. Uh, it's just not a fun fight if you're at 40 speed, but Matt was able to get at least one, perhaps more, speed AVs, and he will not be speed tied with that Pidgeotto, assuming he gets to at least level 19. Etiquette has posted it in chat. This EV is poop, which is uh, <laughs> pretty expected. This that he has the minus special Pikachu. Yeah, and minus he... special attack. Uh, this would be a good point. And Greta, if you want to talk about it, uh, jump right in. Uh, Etiquette just taught three very interesting, even by standards of uh, those of us who are familiar with the Pokemon games. Uh, three very interesting moves, and, and Matt is doing it right now. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah, so um, you might expect that Eevee and Pikachu would be kind of bad as starters because, I mean, they're kind of not that good. <laughs> um, and How you also you? Can't, you can't evolve them, which is also not that good. Um, but there are ways that the game uh, mitigates this, and one of them is these very special moves that Eevee and Pikachu get that are exclusive to them in this game. And for Eevee, uh, we just taught three of them that are based on the three original Eeveelutions. Um, so we have Bouncy Bubble, which is a 90 power special water move, um, and it acts like Giga Drain in that it will heal you some uh, when you use it. And we have Buzzy Buzz, which is also 90 power special, electric, and it always paralyzes the opponent. So very good. And Sizzly Slide as well, 90 power physical fire move that will always burn. So all very, very good. And really helps Eevee out here. Yeah, and gets all of them before the second gym. So you're, you're facing off with Pokemon that have, you know, Tackle and scratch, and you have <laughs> you have this ninety power move that always paralyzes, or ninety power move that always burns, or ninety power power move that heals you, and so it's it, it, it's actually Evie's kind of jacked at this part of the game, really overloaded, and you'll see it here on on Nugget Bridge where it just just carves up the trainers there so uh yeah nugget bridge honestly for both games because pikachu is as you can see on aloe's screen uh grabbing its own move zippy zap which is a 50 power move that always critical hits so in effect it's a 75 power move um 
So not quite as powerful as Eevee's three moves, but it also gets same type attack bonus. So it is, it, 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 it's pretty loaded in its own right. Uh, so once these trainers get through uh, this rival fight, which Etika just completed, as well as uh, the gym, which Aloe and, and Matt are doing, um, it's going to be a lot of, all right, start the fight. One, one attack, boom, fight's over. Um, so it'll be that way for a little bit with, with Eevee and, and for Pikachu as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing, uh... Oh, oh go ahead, Greta. <laughs> I was going to say as well about um, Sippy Sap is it's also additionally good because it has plus two priority, so it's basically always going to be going right. first. Yeah, one thing that happened There's... actually for Matt on that Misty fight, so typically on the Eevee Misty fight, what happened is that you X Special and Buggy Bugs on the uh, Psyduck. And then on Starmie, uh, Starmie's super duper fast, so it will hit you first, but then you use Buggy Bites to paralyze it, and then because it's paralyzed, you go first on the second turn and KO it. Uh, and then it just crit Buggy Bites and just one shot that Starmie. So that Starmie got destroyed pretty quickly. And uh, that Starmie, I mean, for this point in the game, Starmie is so dangerous. I mean, fully evolved, has stalled an 80 power water move that always burns. I mean, uh, Scald Starmie seems pretty busted. I mean, like, I feel like I feel like we should maybe take some notes on that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Scald, it, you're right. It's the thirty percent chance to, to burn on paper, but uh, having played Eevee, it, it feels like it's a lot higher than that. Um, so Allo is just getting through uh, Misty now. Etiquette is halfway up the bridge, and Matt is starting. Um, so again, this is still a, a very close race. Um, I'd say Etiquette's probably out front by a little bit, all told, but um, there are plenty of opportunities for this to, to change as, uh, as the next two, two and a half hours transpire. Yeah, I think guys, the most interesting thing happening right now, um, while well, Etiquette and Matt are pretty much going through and destroying Nugget Bridge, will be to look at uh, Aloe's rival fight. Um, Alo is pretty good level and pretty good attack, so I don't expect this fight to really be a problem uh, for him. Uh, I guess the only thing is that the Oddish can give you um, Poison Powder, which can be annoying. It is also yeah, one thing to note. Oh, yeah, one thing to note is that uh, Owl is level 18, and I know Owl has pretty good attack. So I'm curious to see how much damage this headbutt or quick attack will do on Oddish. See? Yeah, I think the attack is 48 after um, after Misty on the level up, which is so funny because um, that's for reference, the Starmie is potentially a range if you have. Um, less than 37 attack so having like 46 during that fight is uh yeah misty's not doing so good yeah ouch uh but yeah aloe had a just fine uh rival fight there he was able to headbutt flinch the oddish it's got a 30 percent chance to flinch so that's nice rival also has a potion so if you do too much damage uh, the rival just will troll you and say, oh, I'm going to use my potion. So he didn't do that. So really nice fight there. So Etiquette is about to wrap up Nugget Bridge, and then uh, Etiquette's going to be doing a little bit uh, of, of fancy movement with your gym trainers here if somebody wants to, to go into that. Oh, yeah, that, this, so I'm assuming you're referring to Knock Skip, which is, Well, I was just uh, referring to, uh, I'm not sure if Etiquette oh, does Knock Skip. Does he? Does he do Knock Skip? No, he does not do Knock Skip. Okay. So this is kind of the first of these, um, these, not sketchy, but you're like, was this really part of the design passes? And you saw it there. It's, it, it almost was like a, an S shape going around the site of those two trainers. Because 
those trainers don't have very good vision. They, they need some more carrots. Um, so he just was able to go around both trainers and instead of having to fight two, three, four more trainers, he's at this final fisherman and that'll be the last he has here on Route 25 before he goes and sees Bill. Shout out to Ditch Bill. Um, all, uh, all people in chat, you may now add another square to your bingo cards. It's so surreal that, like, Ditch Bill is this whole thing now, when I was, like, there for the inception of it. <laughs> I don't know, do you know the story of that Pokétex? I was there when I the story not. was written. <laughs> so, me, uh, Joker Sleeps, and a couple other people, I believe it was Corvame and Retroid, but I could it be was. wrong. Uh, we were doing a, uh, race of Diploma, which is another Let's Go category, and, um, we were talking. I think Joker was talking about how, like, oh, like, it's really easy to just, like, you know, like, go into the house and then accidentally, like, leave without talking to the computer or something. And we were talking about that literally, like, one minute before he got the bill. And then he literally did that and walked all the way back to Cerulean before he realized that he did not, like, free bill. And then he was like, I'm going to make this a category now. And then it became a category, and now it has, like, how many runners on the leaderboard? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the ditch bill joke did come before that a little bit, but since Joker was like the first one to actually do that and had been talking about it moments prior, that's when it really <laughs> started to take off. <laughs> and now it's like a thing and you that actually I've seen do have. Grind. <laughs> and you do have to talk to, to Bill to keep the game progression going, otherwise there will yeah. be that security guard in front of the house, and you cannot progress out of Cerulean City. So I remember as a, a little kid playing the uh, playing the original game, uh, way back in the day, I'm aging myself a little bit here, but uh, for hours and hours walking around Cerulean being like, why can't I get out of this place? And I just I hadn't talk, bothered to talk to Bill, and the security guard was just sitting there. I'm like, what do I do? Um, so fortunately, they kind of nudge you in that direction here with this game. And, um, you, you have no uh, little children getting hopelessly caged in into Cerulean City anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, Spider mentioned 33 renders on the digital build leaderboard. Joker is in last, That's... but but I think Joker has done better digital build times, but will he refuses to replace yeah, he his, just his time there be because that's the original ditch bill. Like, and he doesn't want that to be off the leaderboards. Interesting little move from etiquette here, picking up nana berries. That's not usually uh in the notes but we've actually seen a few instances where nana berries can be very helpful um specifically catching abra and ghastly essentially what a nana berry will do it, it's taken from pokemon go it will uh freeze the pokemon in place instead of it floating around or you know just moving around it makes it just so much easier to catch. So interesting move from Etiquette there to, to grab the nanaps. Um, we'll see if he's able to use them. Yeah, typically you like some when you catch Pokemon, they'll like often just like give you berries. So often at the time you'll just like naturally have a few nana berries. My guess is either that maybe Etiquette just always picks them up, and I haven't noticed. Or maybe Etiquette has been, like, keeping track and has noticed that he has not gotten any Nana Berries yet, and so just pick those ones up. Typically, you don't want to use too many, uh, Nana Berries in the run anyway, only really for, like, Abra, Ghastly, it's pretty much it. So as long as you have, like, a couple, it's, like, fine. And Owl made it through that, um, Route 25 trainer skip there. And it's on his way to Bill. Meanwhile, our other two runners heading down to Route 6. Um, Greta, yeah, do you want to talk about route, route 6? Um, well, it's a little less exciting for Eevee version uh, compared to Pika. But 
it's also very exciting for me personally because uh, this is where Vulpix spawns. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of stuff that spawns here that could be very nice for us, like this cute puff. Um, you want Vulpix, uh, if you can find an Abra, that is also very great. Um, and sometimes you might be getting like Pidgey or a Tata here. Um, and also you get the rare candy up there, so it's very nice and useful. Yeah, and in Pikachu, you absolutely need to catch a Growlithe. Um, very good boy. Uh, good puppers. Uh, because that ends up being used both on fights on the SSN, which comes pretty much immediately after Route 6, as well as uh, on Route 9. So you, you actually be using Growlithe for those fights. Uh, you can substitute it with Abra, but Abra's pretty uncommon spawn. As Etiquette gets both Fool Picks and Jigglypuff, great Route 6 for him. Um, also worthy of note, Etiquette got two Moonstones, so he'll be able to use a Moonstone on his Jigglypuff to evolve that into Wigglytuff. Um, in Eevee, that tends to be the preference to use that Moonstone on the Jigglypuff, uh, because it's the one Pokémon of the four Jigglypuff, Clefairy, Nidoran male, and Nidoran female, that doesn't actually learn a move on evolution, so it's a little bit faster to evolve via Moonstone. Um, so that's a nice catch for Etiquette. Essentially, it'll be two Pokemon for him. Um, and he can actually use that other Moonstone um, on... He can use it on either of the Nidorans when he gets them. Um, so again, nice... Nice bonus to have, just put tying the tying a bow on what we were talking about earlier with getting those moonstones. Mm -hmm. One thing I saw Alo just do is actually pick up the extra lure that's a little bit outside of uh, Bill's house. Uh, not typically yes. poked up by most runners, however, uh, especially for Pikachu, uh, you really, really want to get that Growlithe, and sometimes that Growlithe just does not want to show up. So getting that extra lore could be a, a nice bit of safety there. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. Like, uh, what I'll find when I'm doing, I'm a Pikachu runner. I'll find that if I haven't seen Growlithe, pretty much after I've gotten the candy up there in the top right corner of Route Six, I'll be like, oh, I need to duck back into the underground uh, to to get that. To, to reset the route because I need Growlithe. <laughs> you, you, you have to get it. Um, otherwise, it's it's a much dicier uh, next few minutes. So uh, it's a good safety move from Allo, um, and it just ensures he's he's not going to have that problem of the lore of the of the lore expiring. Um, also worthy of note, uh, both Etiquette and Matt successfully completed uh, what's called Vermilion Skip which is kind of similar to the skip we were talking about earlier, where you're doing a little serpentine shape around the two trainers, except this one is two trainers staring at each other, and you have to go right in between them. Um, so it's a, it's actually a pretty precise trick. I can say, me personally, I have been known to absolutely miss that one. Uh, so good, good, good on them for, for both getting that. Uh, getting that skip and, and moving on without having to fight an optional trainer. See, true love is standing on Route 6 and staring at each other all day long. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely something. Uh, <laughs> what if you start also, on Route shout 6 out to the day? rival on the... <laughs> Go ahead. Shout out to the rival. Uh... You see Boat Rival like here. You can see it on Matt. See him on Matt's screen, um, and you talk to him, and then you go up the stairs, and you're like, "Okay, I've I, I've lost Rival. I, I I don't need to see him anymore." But you see, Trace has the ability to like jump through floors and ceilings. Uh, so never mind that it makes no sense. He'll be meeting you for the Rival Three fight at the top of the steps here. And that's the fight that it's in. Okay, one thing I'm noticing here is that Etiquette is doing one C rival. 
And yes. I actually can't figure out why he's doing one key rival. Maybe I can get some insight, maybe from you poke attacks, or maybe from chat. Because typically, if you have like bad speed, like if you have minus speed or something, you'll one key rival to um, not get sand attacked. But this etiquette, etiquette should have a thing that he can two key with. So I'm not actually entirely sure of the thinking. Let me write yeah, that down. I... That's something to ask. Uh, etiquette maybe at the end if he decides to join us. Maybe it has to do with the minus special attack? Uh, but I thought oh. he would be able to, to KO that Pidgeotto anyway. But yeah, yeah I, I think you can, a minus special. I think, I think it's rival can. 4, that's like the just... problem. Right. Um, so, just looking at that damage roll, uh, that did about half. And I think the next special attack should increase the, the, the uh, special attack by a factor of two. And so I would have figured on that Pidgeotto, we would have been able to take it out. Uh, yeah, definitely interested in, in Etiquette's insights there. We'll, we'll, have to we'll have to ask about that. You've actually got some nice uh, chat insights. Etiquette, I, I typed in the chat that uh, the Pidgeotto is actually not guaranteed to die. Uh, oh, 19, okay. Yep. It is uh, 11 out of 16, apparently. Well, I've never missed that in a run before, but apparently it's a range. Well, again, the minus special attack definitely does not help him there. Mm -hmm. uh, where, whereas if he had normal special attack, that would that would die. Uh, but here it does not. Yeah, Matt looked like he did the standard uh, two controllers that, and uh, I think it went fine from what I saw. I haven't been tracking what's been on Aloe's screen. I do see... Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he kind of got ambushed part. there. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a, what a throw from Aloe. That, that, that Growlithe was jumping and he still got an excellent out of it. I was going to say that's what we call a gamer throw and then I looked at chat <laughs> and the, literally the last time I actually said gamer throw. Oh, it looks like uh, Alva caught an unlured Growlithe before, so I guess he's getting a uh, catch another uh, one and okay. ran into it, just to get a uh, higher level one. Yeah, I, this this run has made me love Growlithe so much. Oh, uh, actually yeah, he misses the Vermilion skip. Get, that's kind of the common mistake. Uh, you have a little bit more room to the left than you think you do. If you go right down the middle, you, you kind of end up gravitating towards this trainer on the right. Um, so fortunately, this isn't too difficult of a fight. You'll headbutt twice uh, and, and move on. This Bellsprout's not overly dangerous, um, but you do lose some time. One nice thing for Allo is you do get two extra Great Balls out of this fight. So all is not lost. I didn't know that. Yeah, you get two great balls. I what I do because, as I've mentioned earlier, I'm I am want to uh, to miss that skip more than I'd care to admit. Uh, so I'll actually adjust this shop accordingly. Um, so I'll get another lure or another repel just for safety strats. And actually, you can see Aloe is being very safe with the shop. He actually picked up four nuggets in addition to a PP up. So he's got a lot of items to sell here. Uh, so, very safe on the shopping. Yeah, so now our two EV runners are heading up to Route 9. Uh, we've got two fights on Route 9. Um, this first fight with Alicia, you'll typically see our runners using a guard spec so they don't get their stats lowered by uh, the opposing EV. It has Sand attack, growl, and tail whip, and you can't really one shot it, so it's best to just uh, bring up that guard spec there. Yeah, that could fight control if you don't have a, a guard spec, so that's the Eevee, uh, Eevee specific strat. Uh, we'll see on Aloe's screen that Pika tends to 2 see that fight because it's not, uh, otherwise, it's it takes a while, um, so it'll 2C, use an X attack with the second controller, and then use double kick from 
way back at the beginning of the game uh, to, to go ahead and knock out that Eevee. Uh, yeah. Now for this next fight, um, typically Eevee would win controller this uh, fight, but I'm thinking because Etikix might have special attack, he might Q controller this fight. I'm not sure what the range is on Sand True at level 20 here. Uh, going yeah, in with one I, controller. I think this is. I, I'm sure I looked this up. I, I've been focusing on Pikachu, admittedly, uh, in my own personal runs. Um, I think this this faint. No, Ooh, nope, it, it does not. Okay. Of all the moves to get, the two turn Fury Swipe is like by far the best. That is that is as good as it gets because. That thing can sand attack, that thing can dig, that thing can poison sting, and all three of those can be problematic. So that ended up just fine for Etiquette. Getting some status lag here on this Raticate because he, he uh, used Buzzy Buzz, which as we mentioned before is the move that always paralyzes. There's a certain chant that any given move will cause a status lag. It takes about four or five seconds for it to advance to, you know, showing the move. Um, so we saw that there. Uh, but off we go. Yeah, moving on to Route oh. 10 now. A bit scary there, but quite in time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Greta, do you want to maybe talk about Route 10 a bit, uh, what our runners are, will be looking for here? Yeah, so there is many a thing that can spawn here that we like. Um, Meter and Male, Meter and Female, uh, Spiro, Rattata if you haven't gotten it yet, Raticate, Krabby, which we have here. Um, Route 10 is especially important uh, for Pika again, because it's when we will be getting our new friend to join the party. Um, Typically, you're gonna get Meter and Mail to use Nido King, but if not, you can also go with Nido Queen. Um, but either way, we're still working on our 50 catches, and there's a lot of stuff that we can get here, so definitely want to see as much as possible. Combine this with Rock Tunnel, which is immediately after. This is this is the probably the biggest catch section of the, the whole game between these two routes. Um, Etiquette unfortunate a little bit here. Um, he's gotten, he had, he got and caught Krabby, um, but he's gotten a whole bunch of Spiros and, and a Firo on his screen. So what you really want is to get as many unique spawns as you can, uh, but Etiquette looks like had a, a kind of substandard, subpar spawns there. So we'll see how he's able to, to respond to that. Meanwhile, Matt is looking great right now. The first three spawns uh, you saw were um, Nidoran female, Nidoran male, and Spiro. Hopefully my short-term memory is not failing me right here. Uh, yeah, Interesting to see on on Etiquette's screen, he's going for the Raticate, which um, I've seen runners do it, and I've seen runners skip it, uh, but it's a nice bit of experience here. Um, so, taking the opportunity to go ahead, get the Raticate, and get the associated 1300 EXP, which, on, for the case of Eevee, that's a good level and a half. So, that decision worked out there for Raticate. I, I am a personally a huge Raticate enjoyer. Uh, I honestly, sometimes, even if I don't have Rattata, if I see the Raticate on the screen first, I'll still go for it, just for that EXP. It's just getting a yeah, good see, high he's, XP he's is still so getting useful. the Radica. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, exactly what Attic's doing. Meanwhile, Aloe correctly hugging the right side because he uh, hit the trainer on the right before and doesn't want to hit the trainer on the left. So, getting past Vermilion City and heading up towards where we are now, up on Route 9 and Route 10. One of the most sad things that can happen is if you hit one of the trainers going down on Route 6, but then you forget which one you hit, and then you go up the wrong side and hit the other one. I've totally never done that, Amber. 
That's <laughs> that has never happened. Ever. Never. Nope. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and if you believe that, I have a a, a a bridge in New York City I'd like to sell you. <laughs> so again, you're seeing a lot of evolutions, a lot of catches from etiquette from Matt. Um, Etiquette's catch counter has quickly moved all the way up to 22, um, and that's the nature of, of Route 10 and Rock Tunnel. Like it, you'll probably see it go in low to mid-30s by the time he's out. So, big catch section of the game. That's why we talk about Route 10 being so critical, is getting those spawns and getting the right ones. Uh, is that an iterant? Yep, yeah, that's an iterant male. Um, less important for Eevee. Very important for Pika, as we'll talk about uh, when Aloe gets there. Uh, but again, from from Eevee's perspective, it's another spawn uh, or another catch, uh, and he'll evolve that in one level to Nidorino. And he has the option, since he's got a second Moonstone, to go ahead and take that to Nido King, which would be three Pokemon in one catch. So, uh, good catch there for Etiquette. Yeah, both the Route 10 honestly looking pretty good. Uh, I believe Matt got like everything, and I believe Etiquette got everything except Nito Female. So uh, both that, of those I think is really correct. Good. Yes. Yeah, that's that's exactly what you want to see. And Etiquette also getting that little extra experience bump. <laughs> uh, where did that Firo come from? Firo. What are you doing, Hello. friend? <laughs> <laughs> there are no patches of grass down there. Um, so both Etiquette and Matt coming up on um, a certain trainer from the Elite Four that you know might be mentioned in a stick song. I'm not going to give you guys this this spot on your bingo cards. Darn. Um, <laughs> so while you you uh, take out one of these rockets, she goes ahead and takes out three. So, um, yeah, this will be this will not be the last we see of uh, Elite Four member Lorelai. Yeah, meanwhile, I will make his way through Route Nine, uh, coming up on the Sand Crew fight, and uh, I believe he's going to be ha have a level seventeen Growlithe for this. So we're going to be seeing a range, probably on this stand through, uh, and if it doesn't die, um, bad things can happen. So hopefully they don't. Yeah. It's probably all told. I mean, you don't really know what the, the special stat on the Growlithe is unless you see it level up. Uh, I think he just gave that spec special attack to Pikachu, and he's corrected it. So uh, good on Aloe for making that correction before he got too far down the road. Will it get the KO? He does. So... No digs, no five turn fury swipes, no poison stings, no sand attacks. Uh, good for him to be moving on there. Etiquette runs straight into a glowing Machop. That's a great find for him. Uh, so now we're into Rock Tunnel. There's a, you know, Route 10, there are five catches you kind of want. There are five more here. Uh, Machop, Cubone, Graveler, assuming you have you already have caught Geodude back in Mount Moon. Um, said Chop, Cubone, Graveler, Zubat, and I'm of course missing one. Uh, the Rhyhorn, the most important one. And, oh, the, the most important one. <laughs> um, and actually there was one on that screen. So Rhyhorn is really useful because you'll go ahead and use it as a ride, <laughs> especially in Eevee. Uh, where there aren't a whole lot of fried alternatives for a while. I don't know if anybody else saw that <laughs> Spinner Passion album, but I just, I almost just lost it right there. Oh, I did not see it. It was very scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made it through, though. You know what? That's the part that matters. And yes. Owl getting out at an immediate Spiro here. Very nice. Uh, I did not see what else spawned. So Nito I... M. Needle mail, Needle spawned, mail which great. is yeah. critical for Pika. Um, unlike for Eevee, where you usually just take the Jigglypuff and run with it, uh, uh, in terms of using your Boonstone, 
there's a the, the path in in Pika is absolutely to use your Moonstone on the the Nidorino after it evolves from Nidoran to Hell. Um, and again, Pika kind of tends to become Pika and friends. Nido King is definitely one of Pika's best friends for this run because it it, it is able to deal with a lot of the the Pokemon that Pikachu just can't deal with either because of type coverage or because, as you'll see, the levels of the opposing trainers gets out of control really fast. Um, so you definitely need a friend there. And as we see at Rhyhorn there on Etiquette's screen, so that'll speed up the rest of Rock Tunnel for him quite a bit. Yeah, I also noticed that um, Etiquette did a two-controller fight on the... the um... Slowpoke. I almost hit Snorlax. I knew that was wrong. Uh, on the Slowpoke, where he used Buggy Bug and Helping Hand to get the one shot. Um, that was an interesting strategy. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I think it's before. because slow. I, I think it's because he's got minus special attack, and that is not a guaranteed uh, KO with with Buzzy Buzz uh, on the Slowpoke there. So nice, nice little pivot on Etiquette's part to. And again, this is a theme without with, with this run, right? It's or it's both Eevee and Pikachu. It's being able to take what circumstances you're in and adapt accordingly. So nice job from uh, you're seeing why he's a top level runner. He's he's able to take uh, adverse circumstances and able to to uh, make the modifications accordingly. So it's a nice play there from Etiquette. Etiquette is going Etiquette to be able... actually using Nido Strat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if he's going to be using the Nido Strat. We do know that he had the double moonstone, so he had he had to use it on something. Um maybe he does, maybe yeah. he doesn't. We'll see. Yeah, Matt getting a number of spawns here. I saw both a Machop and a Cubone there, so good spawns for him to get. Uh, those both take four levels to evolve, so you want to get those into your party and get some levels on them. So nice, nice finds there. Etiquette with the Graveler. I believe Matt had a Graveler on screen as well that you can go to uh, pretty soon. Yep. Meanwhile, Aloe uh, in Lorelei fight right now. Unfortunately, I didn't get a great look at his Route 10. I know you got the Spearow, you got the Needle Mail. I'm not too sure what else you got there. I will. Crabby. I... Crabby, thank you. I like a yeah. decent amount of things there. There was no Needle female, but he might go back up after this fight to see what spawns. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think... multiple ways of handling that. Mm hmm. Looking at his tracker right now, he does seem to have a lot planned. So I feel like he can leave without the Nido female. But also, you yeah. know, it's, it's nice if it, if you can kind of like take a look up there, it spawn pretty quickly. You know, you take you take the thing that you can get early, so you don't have to wait later. Interesting fight from Aloe. He's using so usually at this point. You deposit the the Growlithe, and you take on the Raticate just one C. But he's actually using it. He's actually using it. Oh, and look at the, look at what oh we got god. here on Matt. Oh my god! No, he repelled it away. He, he repelled it. And Trump and Matt had him on screen at the same time. To be fair, Etiquette repelled it because it was fully blocking the way. Mm, you can't just get rid of the Kangaskhan like that. <laughs> Wow, uh, sorry, no, I interrupted you post text, but I was Oh wow. no, you're good. You're good. Get a that, was worth... oh and we God. have a glowing chancy from Aloe. This could oh, be a what is ton happening? of experience. <laughs> um, we, we've got some uh, we've got some spawns coming here. I've had a lot of emotion from the past twenty seconds. <laughs> wow. If that stays in, that is going to be a hefty amount of it. Wow, mm. stayed in. What's in the party, though? I don't actually know what's in his party right uh, now. Uh... 
Uh, okay, that is ooh, like a not a thing. super size, but this oh is a lot. This is so again. This is what we were talking about earlier. Uh, on one hand, that's great. Like Pika's level twenty-seven. There's that thing is gonna be able to plow through a lot of different fights with a lot of effectiveness. But does he need all those levels on Gloom or Spiro or Radita? Um, and each one of those takes about two seconds. So pluses and minuses there. Mm -hmm, for sure. I will say uh, I was doing a run the other day and ended up with a glowing Chansey um, on Route 10, uh, except it was a super size. It was one of those one in 10 possibilities. And that was good for uh, that was good for about fourteen thousand experience. Uh, oh, oh I came out of that. <laughs> I came out of that fight uh, at level thirty-one on Pika. So I just rolled up to the rocket there and was just like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> wow, I I cannot say I've ever I've never actually caught a Route Six or a Route Ten Chansey in a run before. I've, like, never really been in a situation where it's, like, worth it to do that, just because, again, we just talked about it, but, like, a lot of times you have, like, so many extra things in your party, and it's just so many extra levels that, like, it's not really worth it, but also it's fun, so I, I mean, I'm, I promote having fun. Yeah, oh, it took a good minute and a half for everything to level up, it was, it was, uh, it was getting a little sick of the little... After a while, that's for sure. Yeah. If I got a super size round 10 chance, yeah, I'd just like take off my headphone for a solid like three minutes. <laughs> so I don't have to that's hear like a hundred of those. <laughs> uh, we actually have etiquette. Um, this is a bit of a scary fight here with this trainer who's got a Vulpix and a Kadabra. And part of why it's scary is because of what just happened. That Vulpix has flamethrower, which is a 1 in 10 chance to burn, uh, which is what Etiquette just got. So fortunately, uh, it looks like he's able to get through the rest of it, and he does, uh, but just a scary fight there. That, that Eevee was fast enough to actually outspeed the Kadabra, uh, which was clutch there, because uh, otherwise he would have taken a side beam, and a side beam crit would have been bad news. So good on Etiquette for getting out of there. Yeah, one thing I'm a little bit concerned about, let me just take a look, I... From what I can see, Matt's Eevee is only level 25 right now, like, just hit level 25, and he's most of the way through Rock Tunnel. That's definitely a little bit lower than you want to be here. It might prove to be uh, a little bit, maybe some, lose some turns in Rock and Hideout, because of uh, how low level that is. Shouldn't be the end of the world, yeah. but um, typically I, I'd say you probably want to be like, what, like 26, 27 here? Yeah, I'm usually looking yeah, at least 26, and honestly, you know... Okay, you don't want to be level 31 like I was after my, my super size chance. But, uh, you know, if you can be 27, it, it, so Eevee learns the move Double Edge at level 28. Uh, which is a very powerful, it's 120 power normal move, with same type attack bonus, so that thing, that thing does a lot of damage, um, and it will speed up um, Rocket Hideout significantly. Matt will definitely not have that luxury here, he's just, he's just too low on experience to get that. Um, so, it's, it's kind of getting the right amount of experience, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be too over leveled, but you probably want to be higher level than this. Yep, Etiquette making his way into uh, Rival 4 now. Um, I'd expect another 1C fight, kind of for the same reason as. Uh... Oh, we're going to 2C it actually. Wow. Going, I, was wrong on, I was wrong on both rivals. <laughs> 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 you never know what he's going to do next. I just feel like he's listening in, and it's just like, hmm, let's make the commentators wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, 
let's see what the owl has got in Rock Tunnel so far. Owl, I got, got the Hubat, I saw the shot. Not yeah, sure if he got no Rhyme Horn yet. yet. Okay. Yeah, so it's just the Zubat and the Machop, no Rhyme Horn, so he's still, he's still kind of walking around there at, at normal speed. He's, uh, you know, getting getting those, uh, getting the, the running and the calisthenics in, so uh, hopefully he'll find one of those Rhyhorns there soon. You know, now, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it was that the, the buggy bug on Rival 3 was a rank and the one on Rival 4 wasn't. Maybe I, maybe I was mixing those up in my head. It's been, it's been probably uh, it could have a year since I've thought about race strats for EV, so I'm yeah. definitely not and as well versed as I used to be. Interesting there, etiquette was able to go for uh, despite being minus ex minus special attack on the EV, was still able to go for the the bouncy bubble and uh, drill run combo on Raichu. Uh, Nice little optimization there. If you don't want to use um, an X attack on Rhyhorn, you just, instead of taking that extra time to go into your menu, you just use both Pokemon attacking. You also save an X attack that way, which those X attacks, X special attacks, can, can get a little sparse as you go through uh, this part of the game. So he's still able to do that despite being minus X special attack. Or minus special attack, excuse me. Also finishing up the rival fight. Uh, again, bears noting these guys are, are both very, very close to one another. Um, you know, it's only about 30 seconds of game time difference, and etiquette's got one more catch. So um, this race is this race is close. Um, and Allo is, you know, he's 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 a bit further back, but considering newer to the game, he's he's doing just fine as well. Mm -hmm. I am a little bit concerned about Owl's uh, Great Ball count. Uh, I know he's can catch some missed throws, and also a lot of times he'll throw when the Pokemon either jumps or attacks, which is very frustrating. Yeah. But his, uh, his Great Ball count's pretty low right now, which concerns me. Yeah, there are ways to remedy it, but uh, it involves getting out of Rock Tunnel first. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Yep, so neither of our EV runners have double edge, so they're going to be uh, double headbutting the Clefairy. I hope we see at least one metronome. At least yes. one. So, metronome for, for the unfamiliar... Oh, Etiquette just need okay. Well, I Etiquette's totally got wasn't paying attention. So. <laughs> It, it, so, Never mind. This, this is part of the reason you use Nita King here is that you're able to to just eliminate uh, eliminate the Clefairy with a Poison Jab. Poison is super effective against Fairy type. Clefairy has the the, the Fairy type in this game, um, but we're about to see Matt's fight here, um, and he will, in all likelihood. Uh, we will be seeing a metronome. Oh, Eddie Stop uses oil. Soft oh. oil. <laughs> okay. just, oh, what a troll. I just, it's, it's, it's healing half of his HP, but the, it uh, it flinches, so we, we won't see a second one. Um, yeah, there there are some hilarious combinations that you can see out of, uh, out of Clefairy. I've seen metronome explosion, which actually saves you some time because the Clefairy blows up. Um, and that's the end of the fight. Uh, but there are some ones that have that are just not fun. So if, if you can get your hands on the Nita King um, or, you know, headbutt flinch like Matt did there, it, it saves you a lot of trouble. Yeah, one thing I am noticing here on Owo's side is that he does still have the Growlithe in the party. Which, I say Growlithe Enjoyer, you know what? I, I love it. But... Um, typically, what people do is that they deposit the Growlithe after Route 10, and then they will bring it back into the party later for the Rocket Hideout section and the Ride Arcanine. 
Yeah, and it's it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, just not getting those extra levels that, that take that extra time. Growlithe evolves via via Firestone and not by a level up. So the, those levels are, are and additionally, you don't use, uh, and it's actually using Growlithe in this 2C fight, uh, which is it, not a strat you normally see. He's actually helping handing the Pikachu. Uh, so that's uh, 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 interesting optimization, uh, interesting tech there. Let's see how this fight goes. Uh, but yeah, not not in the uh, conventional routing for this game. Oh, and, and he's still able to knock out the camera. That, that fight actually worked out pretty well for him. Mushi was Nido King and Machop. Right. Eradicate fight. There are so many interesting things that Etiquette does. I honestly, I one day I just want to just, like look at all of like Etiquette's notes that he has on all these different fights. I know Etiquette's routed up so many different strategies uh, throughout yeah. the Rock Tunnel hideout for these kind of like different situations. I do like uh, so again. I I tend to focus on Pikachu, but when I did Eevee runs. Um, I tended to like to bring out Machop in that fight as well, um, mm. and 2C there. I know most EV runners tend to 1C that fight, uh, but just that having the Machop there and able to use Karate Chop is nice to get that super effective damage on Raticate. As a 1C fight, that Raticate fight is dangerous. It's got Hyper Fang that can flinch, it's got Crunch that can lower your defense. Uh, so. Getting that fight, and you're actually going to see the one controller fight here from Matt down below, um, and kind of see what that looks like. See, there's a Super Fang right off the bat. That's half of his HP gone. Oh, oh! Uh -oh. And, and actually, this is and... dangerous now. This is very dangerous. He's bringing out yeah. the support trainer, um, so he's going to heal up and then attack. Uh, but you can, just as we were talking about, this fight can go sideways if you're not careful. Mm hmm Now I... And it flinched again. Uh, this this actually could be in Hyper Fang range again. Or just the Rhyhorn, uh, okay. Unfortunately, he attacked the Rhyhorn, so he gets through that fight, and it's, again, an Eevee, that can be scary once. So, and then you can see, that was, what, a five or six turn fight? Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's fallen a little bit behind etiquette now because of just how long that fight took. Mm, yeah, uh, definitely seeing the benefit of um, etiquette just being able to one turn that. Because uh, seeing how many turns that took, uh, Matt. Uh, I did notice Pablo did not get a Rhyhorn in Runk Tunnel. However, um, that's not too bad for Pikachu. Uh, because you'll get the Firestone pretty soon and then we can ride the Arcanine. But yeah, uh, I'll have to walk in for a bit. The equivalent in... Oh! oh. Aloe is oh. fighting an optional trainer here. It looks like he might have just accidentally mashed A. Uh, so he's fighting Camper Trent, who I can't say I know what Camper Trent has. Uh, I just have Nido King out on Nido front. King now. Annex, Annex at level 28, so hopefully should hopefully be able to take these out without too much trouble. Okay, um, yeah, just use Leer. He should be okay on the Krabby, at least. Yeah, for those who don't run this game, you may not know, the, there's so many different buttons. There's, like, a tiny Joy-Con, and, like, half the buttons are A buttons. So if you accidentally slash one thing... It, it can be, Sand oh. Slash here, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. Oh, uh, yeah. So Sand he's going to bring out... Pokemon. He's going to bring out uh, something else, because Nido King mm. is... Despite itself being a ground type, it's weak to ground moves because it's a poison type as well. Uh, so this could this could be a challenging fight here for Allo. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking an Allo situation. Just try to bring out the two C, just so you can get that two V one going, and then figure it out from there. I think it's gonna be might be a bit tough. Krabby is definitely a good choice here. I think though, because. Um, Sandslash's yeah. special attack, uh, defense not as good. Krabby has... 
Oh, okay. Right, it's down to about half, but the Krabby is uh, in dire straits here. Mm -hmm. And a sand, sand attack. attack. Oh, this thing is mean. Man. Yeah, if you're running Pikachu, any sort of sand true, and especially like a sand flash, uh, uh, the bane of your existence. Yeah, this is actually, um, so if, for those who know the game, uh, there are two trainers in the 8th gym who identity of the gym leader, we simply don't know at this point. Um, but there are two trainers that you can fight. We fight one with a graveler and we take care of it in one hit with skull. Uh, the other option for that fight is a sand slash. And you can kind of see why we picked the Graveler and not the Sand Slash, because Sand Slash between Sand Attack and Dig and it, I don't know if that one has either of those two had Poison Sting, but it can get Poison and it's not a fun Pokemon to face. Plus, it's got really good physical defense. Yeah, we the, the normal route does not face any Sand Slashes. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, also the Sand Slash and, um, and Giovanni come out to Ice Perfect. I think it's the main reason. You don't oh, want to go fight that one. Even worse. <laughs> even worse. Um, so yeah, um, Owl making his way to uh, Rival 4 here. Uh, meanwhile, Trubs is about to wrap up kind of the the first half of Rocket Hideout, where you just kind of fight a bunch of grunts. Uh, Etiquette about to enter kind of the, the boss gauntlet, I guess. Where you gotta fight Jesse and James, then you gotta fight Archer, and then you gotta fight Giovanni. Uh, I did, I believe I saw Eticate, uh switch Rhyhorn to slot one, so I believe he'll be doing Rhyhorn sets. Although, I mean, I've, I've said so many different things about Eticate's run that have been wrong, so uh, take my take my word with a grain of salt. <laughs> hey, you, you never quite know, uh, which, again, I mean, he's got your point earlier Amber he's got he's got a number of tricks up his sleeve and so this strat you're seeing from him now is used a lot more in Pikachu when uh, when you generally have Vito King uh, but he's using it here um, and as you can see one of the really nice features is you just get rid of Arbok. Arbok is a dangerous Pokemon uh, so getting rid of that right away is really nice for him. And he can actually turn this into a two-turn fight, which he couldn't do otherwise. Well, with Eevee, if you have, like, really, really good special attack, you can two-turn it. But, uh, it's very unlikely. Yeah. So, nice fight there for Medikit. Again, especially with the, the special attack uh, not being there on Etiquette's Eevee, um, that was absolutely the right move for him to make. So uh, now he's going to put Eevee back out in the front for Archer and then Giovanni after that. Meanwhile, Aloe is finishing up uh, the tower rival, rival four. Um, Looks like he's using pretty standard strats now, I'm using both Nita King and Pikachu to get through that fight. Um, and again, you'll see you'll see him um, use uh, Poison Jab on the Clefairy, and you'll you'll see what should be standard strats as he starts to get into Rocket Hideout on his own. Oh, and Matt. Matt took the elevator to the wrong floor. He's up on floor one instead of floor four. Just a quick little, quick little detour. Uh, not, not a problem other than just a few seconds. Did definitely have done that not several get... times. <laughs> and and uh, etiquette, you're seeing some of the effects here of that lower special attack. He did not get this range on this goal bat, which normally you do get with the psychic move. Uh, Glitzy. Glitzy Glow is the psychic move. Yes. Um, by the way, Glitzy Glow gets taught in the Celadon Pokemon Center. We, we haven't mentioned that yet. Um, so obviously Eevee has a whole bunch of moves. Um, and oh, and Ooh. on that screen we're seeing Eevee uh, double targeted there. 
double targeted by Weezing and Harbuck, unfortunately. Uh, and unfortunately, that's that's one of the things that can happen. Actually, the official notes, uh, shout out to Etchy for putting those together. Um, the notes for this game say on this fight, and as well as the Jesse and James fight that comes uh, shortly thereafter, don't get unlucky. Um, Matt did not adhere to those directions very well uh, and got unlucky. Yeah, luckily Matt was also doing the Rhyhorn fight, so he could just uh, pump another X attack into Rhyhorn and uh, get that K on Weezing. Adapted well, yes. Alright, so Etiquette starts the Giovanni fight. Uh, this is a scary fight because Persian has the move Slash, which is a high crit rate move. Um, and it just does a lot of damage. It's level 35. It, it attacks are generally normal type, um, except for Fake Out, which you just saw there. Um, so the strat is to burn. Um, let's go ahead and burn the Persian. Oh, that. Yeah, we got lots of not a crit. Very, <laughs> very yeah, low roll on heal. that Persian, too. So we'll see Abra. if he can two shot this. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with Abra, if uh, if you walk in front of it, or, um, yeah, if you walk in front of it, it will despawn, so you kind of got to come up behind it. Uh, definitely a tricky spot, especially with the spinner right there. So um, I honestly probably would have done the exact same thing, kind of have that left side, and then it would have despawned and would be sad. Yeah, it's kind of a, a throwback to the original game where the Abra only had the move teleport. Uh, and minus also see attack on that right horn. Yeah, this the 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 lower special attack is, is definitely hurt etiquette here. Uh, normally that bouncy bubble again, it's four times effective against a rock ground type. Um, but Giovanni's pokes and other like nature fight pokes in this game are. It, it, in a lot of cases, loaded up with HP. Uh, so that Rhyhorn's pretty bulky. Uh, in this case, that extra HP was just enough for the Rhyhorn to live, um, in part because of that lower special attack. So, unfortunately, the, the, the special attacks cost etiquette in a number of fights in this, in this run. And you can see why, normally, if you're doing PB attempts, you'll go ahead and reset if you see uh, minus special attack. Etiquette picking up backup Ultra Balls as Matt starts the same uh, scary Giovanni fight. Let's see, let's see how this fight goes for Matt. Uh, and gets the burn. Uh, and a very exactly low the roll. Again, he's he's only at level twenty-seven here. This is this is what Amber was talking about earlier, uh, where he's under leveled, and that's that's going to cause uh, various issues throughout Rock, uh, Rocket Hideout and and into the fight in Pokemon Tower. Uh, so we're seeing that we're seeing that play out here. Yeah, also, um, Finally hits level 28. Aloe just talked to Madame Saladon, um, and our other runner, runners did that earlier when they talked Blitzy Glow. Um, Greta, if you wanna, do you wanna talk about who Madame Saladon is and why she's so important <laughs> for this run? Yeah, so, um, what you can do there is, uh, synchronize the natures, and what that does is that, um, we, like, select, like, flower colors or something, and the psychic lady is, like, all right, now every Pokemon you encounter will be this nature. Um, so we set that to modest, um, meaning plus special attack, minus attack. And that will last us through the rest of like the, the day, which doesn't matter for us because remember earlier we rolled over into a new day, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, and everything that we catch will be modest nature, which is going to matter uh, for the main that we end up switching to. doing a, a little 
teleport to Pokemon Tower to go get this Ghastly. Uh, it's a nice cycle there. And the Ghastly did not... Uh, sometimes, even before you're able to get the Nanab off, it'll just start moving in any which direction. So, nice, easy catch for him there. Now, I am curious. Um, if you two believe in... Uh, luring for tower, or if you're no tower lure. Okay, I have. I feel very strongly about this, but I want to know your opinion first. So I'm about to disappoint you. Uh, oh, are you? I am. I am a lure in tower advocate. Oh. Uh, I know. I know. I know. Oh. I, and, and anecdotally, I don't think it does much, right? Like, the, the encounter rate doesn't really go up a whole lot. Um, I'll actually do it in part because, like, I want the gases to be a little bit higher of a level, um, in case I've got, like, Machop or Cubone or whatever, uh, that's kind of there in the background, uh, but I completely understand the opposing opinion, um, and, well, like, spoiler, you're gonna end up having to lure after Pokemon Tower anyway, um, it just makes that menu a little bit easier once you get out. So, I do it. I know I'm in the minority there. Okay, one, one pro lore, one anti lore. Greta, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it definitely doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you always got my yeah, back, Greta. This, <laughs> this is what I expected. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm not getting bullied. I nope, not happening. Okay, Edda actually two seeing this uh, Haunter here, uh, considering his special attack, I just thought makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Though so probably helping hand this EV, mm -hmm. um, which will use Quincy Glow. Yep, perfect. Yep, also didn't have to take the Sucker Punch damage to aim for Nido King there. Which that that yeah, little bit just, of HD uh, can be helpful. On yeah, it, it, amazing how that can work. Because uh, Sucker Punch will do like nine or ten damage. Um, etiquette being very conservative on the. Uh... Oh, 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 he'd already caught Castly. Yes, um, yeah. Being very conservative on the. Um... Uh, on the Ultra Balls. I think he had picked up the five in, in um, basement, and picked up three more here. He does have a fair number of catches to do still, so that, that does make sense. Yeah, so because Al Alo did not get a Rhyhorn, he's forced to kind of do the Pikachu Jesse James strat. Um, Greta, if you want to explain that and, and why he had to pull out that Paris there. Yeah, so unfortunately for little Paris, uh, he's going to be our sacrifice. Um, we do not want to get hit by uh, Arbok on turn one, so rest in peace to Paris. Yep, meanwhile, Etiquette is moving on to uh, the Tower Destiny game fight. Um... Let's see. Um, so he did the Rhyhorn strat on this game too, so here, um, you can't really do the Rhyhorn strat here, um, just because, uh, Weezing has Dark Pulse, and Dark Pulse will do, uh, quite a bit of damage to Rhyhorn, and it can flinch. So what ends up happening if you try to do it, is that you'll just keep getting flinched by Dark Pulse, and you won't be able to attack, and then all of your other Pokémon die, and it's very sad. So, now he'll- ooh, Paralyzed turn 1. I'll have to do the, the um, Eevee strategy, even though he's not a special attack. Let's see how he plays it. Yeah, typically you bounce people will turn 2, but because you're that mana special, I'm not sure that's gonna kill, so you go get the glitchy glow. Oh, and he got- it got crit on the Nita King, too. Uh... Not a, not a huge deal. I think he's got Cubone in the party. Really, you just want something there uh, that can take hits from that Weezing. Uh, he's going to use he's gonna use King. Uh, so it's a little bit of a dicey fight. Because Kingler's got pretty low 
special defense. We'll see if we'll see what happens here. Uh, and we get uh, Path of Legends, our first one of those. Everybody mark your bingo cards. Um, so if your Eevee or Pikachu hits a certain friendship threshold, there's a percentage chance uh, on each turn that it can break out of any adverse status conditions. So here, uh, breaking out of breaking out of poison uh, using what's called Power of Love, Path of Legends for, you know, because Commentator Bingo exists. Mark that one off. Yep. Anyone close on their bingos yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, uh, we might have missed one earlier um, regarding potential rolling chairs and OSHA. Um, and I can just sidestep that by saying um, using rolling chairs on concrete floors is not um, not pokey tax attorney approved. So <laughs> uh, my, my own little variation based on, you know, but you're actually about to see that on uh, Aloe's screen. So yeah, kids don't stand on roll. Oh, never mind. I thought it was somewhere else. Uh, but kids don't stand on rolling chairs. That's a bad thing. Yeah, it's scary. I did that recently, um, but I held on to my wall for dear life, and I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will climb with a lot of a lot of things. Like I'll stand on like uh, counters and things. The rolling chair is definitely the scariest of all those things. Yeah, you know, Paris. What if Paris just survived here? Somehow just like locked in. <laughs> locked in. actually no. can be an issue. Uh-oh. Poor Paris. <laughs> so this actually can be an issue if you catch... Um, so I know some of the strats are to catch um, a fairy type. So it can, you can do Paris uh, like Allo did here. You can also do Jigglypuff or you can do Clefairy. If you catch Clefairy, though, um, it's caught with a higher friendship amount. Um, so there's actually a chance that it could survive, even though you've caught it, just threw it in a box and done nothing with it until now. It can actually survive on on uh, Path of Legends. You can double mark your bingo cards now. Um, and yeah, it's that actually kind of gets annoying because it's like, want to actually sacrifice the Clefairy in that circumstance? Anyway. Yeah. So Etiquette no. actually cut a good bush. Um, that's not what he wanted. He wanted that Pidgey that's flying around there. There it is. So just taking a quick look at Etta's catch count. He's got 50 planned. Yeah, he's at, he's at 33, including this Pidgey. So he's a little bit low on catches. He's still not including Tentacool, Tentacruel yet, which is kind of a last resort, but... He's gonna have to start catching pokes, so um Yeah, let me take a look at Matt's trackers. 30 after tower is pretty low. That is low. Yeah, he got got full Pidgey line marked, he got tentacle tentacle uh, marked, got the dojo, so um basically he's looking for everything, all the standard stuff. And if he misses even one of those things, we're going to be seeing a, a dicey catch route here. So hopefully he just gets everything. Yeah, it's... You know, it's why you're like, oh, why are these guys catching, um, you know, bonuses early on? Like a Sandshrew, or a Mankey, or a Natkins. Um, it, 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 like, those are only single evolutions for all practical purposes but it's to avoid situations like this um, where you're scrambling at the end um, so you could easily imagine a situation where Matt's gets to the end of route 17 here and just has to wait uh, for whether it's Ponyta or Psyduck oh, there's Psyduck and I see not a problem there mm -hmm. um, or whatever catch he needs to get, and instead of just being able to move on, he's just kind of stuck there waiting. Um, 
you know, you try to repel off if you have one, and then quickly your lures start to go. Um, so it's it can be dicey if you're at, at this low of a catch count, but hopefully he's able to find what he needs here, find what he needs on Route 17 and in or uh, on the surf route, and then in, in Mansion as well. Yeah, I I am checking uh, Matt's pack count right now. Okay, I remember he had a really good Route 10, which I was surprised he had it was so low. So I took a quick look through and realized he did not get a U-Bat in Rock at all, which is oh. like by far the most common thing. And he worth two posts till you get the U-Bat and the Gold Bat. So I know he was low he was low before Route 10. The Route 10 kind of brought brought him back to like an uh, average pack count, and then missing that U-Bat and that he was uh low again, and then also didn't get the ghastly. So. Usually the Zubats just run into you. Uh, yeah. That's normally <laughs> not. And etiquette getting a, a Ponyta here. That's absolutely a, a, a must catch on this route. Uh, more so than any other folk. Of course getting motion controlled because motion controls exist in this game. Uh, but Ponyta will evolve it into Rapidash and that'll be the ride Pokemon. Uh, for the remainder of the game. And it's along with Theradactyl, which is not worth your time to go out of your way and get. Uh, those are the two fastest ride pokes in the game. So you definitely want to have Rapidash uh, for this last hour and change because it just speeds up what you're doing so much. Um, and you can see he's already uh, he's already tagged Ponyta to, to, to ride Rapidash when he gets it. He's doing his boxing. He's He's going to go ahead and evolve Ponyta right now. Um, and he'll be riding that right away, just because of how much of an advantage that is. Yeah, so meanwhile, uh, Owl has made it through Rocket Hideout. Um, it looks like he had a bit of trouble um, keeping that Nido King alive. I think uh, it wasn't fully healed up going into kind of the boss gauntlet. So we had to bring out uh, Arcanine for a little bit, but uh, made it through. Didn't look like anything disastrous happened on our side, uh, at least on Archer and Giovanni. So uh, he'll be making his way back up and into Pokemon Tower. Yeah, you know, I, I know obviously Aloe's newer to the game, but he's, he's still on pretty good pace. So credit to him. Um, hopefully he can, you know, continue to... Uh, Go ahead and, and and continue to to make good progress and have a good time here today. Yeah, let's see. Um, etiquette just getting the side. Uh, I think that's the last thing he needs on here. Yeah, me and you both saying the same thing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, for Matt, uh, still looking for that Pidgey. Yeah, right now he's getting that Rapidash to ride. Uh, Pidgey is a 10% spawn. Um, I am not sure if he's staying around for it, or if uh, if he's Giga Pidgeotto, if he'll try to go for that instead. And then maybe... There is an option, um, a couple options. Um, he could, um, if he gets Pidgeotto instead of Pidgey. He could go like up to Route 1 and just catch a Pidgey there. You could be seeing Tangela, could be seeing Magmar. Uh, I would not say any of those are ideal, but um, you do what you got, gotta do. You could also do Route 21. By the way, following up on what we were talking about earlier with Aloe's Great Ball situation, um, he went ahead and talked to the NPC there in, in Lavender Town, who gives 20 Great Balls as a reward for retrieving Cubo. Um, that's a nice backup if you absolutely need it. Um, and as, as Amber, you had pointed out earlier, he was probably a little low. Oh, and a Chansey on the so, screen. You do not <laughs> want to catch that Chansey. Etiquette found an Eevee in the grass, and Matt found two Eevees in the grass, and also a Chansey. So. We're, we're getting some spawns here, and Matt's going to go ahead and uh, catch this Pidgey Lordo. Yeah. So now I am curious how Matt is gonna get his 50. Uh, I'll try to take a look at that tracker, see what uh, he ends up planning here. 
we thinking maybe Magmar or Tangela? Boy. Would be... That would be my guess. Is it the Ninetales? Question mark. Well, he's got oh, that. Oh, the Ninetales? Oh, did he not have Ninetales marked before? I don't know. That is a... Yeah, okay. That could so. be it. Yeah, so uh, typically on Eevee, kind of how you fix um, odd, odd versus even counts is that you'll pick up the Firestone in the mansion and evolve your Vulpix there. So yeah, it looks like he's just going to pick up that Firestone there, which uh, again is not ideal. You have to pick up the Firestone, put the Eevee back into your party, and then take it back out again. But uh, it's still better than catching some of those uh, more annoying Pokemon. Etiquette now on Route 21. Mm. I think that's right. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I will so just got sniped big... by a spinner there. Unlucky, no. unlucky for him. Oh. Oh my god, four uh, Pokemon. Oh no. Are there just four Gastlys? I hope so. I believe so. Yeah. So Etiquette is looking for a star you and he finds one right at the end of the route. So nice find there. Let's take a look at what the CP is. It's 1026. Now, that by itself doesn't tell us a whole lot. Um, but you know, usually you want a star you that's kind of higher 1000, so like 1090. If you can get 1100 or higher, awesome. The average is 1062. But what the CP value doesn't tell you is the distribution of those stats. Um, so that was a 1026 star that Etiquette just got. Um, all things being equal, you would kind of expect that to not be great. Um, but it could be 1026 and every other stat besides special attack and speed are just terrible. And special attack and speed are fine. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, see how good his star or how not good his star is uh, once he uses a couple of the rare candies on that uh, and you'll see you're seeing uh, Matt head over to Route 21 as well also looking for a star he's also looking for and he's got two of them on his screen he's also looking for Tentacool which is a catch um, it's it moves around a lot. It's a 1C catch in water. You can only 1C water catches. A oh. thousand one. Oh, oh, oh I, yeah. He, I, he, I, he, I, I kind of agree with that, I'll be honest. It. He runs from it I like because that it was play. so bad. Wow. Uh, and you can see there was another one on screen, and he made the right call. That's a 1078. <laughs> yeah. Much better. Um, kind of a gutsy call there. Just... You know, you never know if the star can despawn or, God forbid, you know, and that one was even worse. Uh, but a gutsy call, hopefully one that pays off for bad. Yeah, the uh, star you can range anywhere um, from 962 to 1171. So, yeah, 1001 was definitely a little questionable. Oh. So we'll see how this one yeah, goes. I that's probably the lowest, and I haven't seen all the races, right, but right, go probably go right, go the lowest. What? That spinner does not spin to the right. Um, and Matt just went to the left of him, and he almost oh gets gosh. hit, but he just oh, On my boy. screen, it fully looked like he was directly in front of the vision. That was crazy. Wow. All right, so uh, Matt did no. not sell the Helix Fossil uh, in Vermilion, which is uh, kind of what the standard play is. But this is nice from his perspective because it's another Pokemon. It's actually another two Pokemon. So you can take uh, Almanite and then evolve that into Omastar. So two more Pokemon, especially given how low he is on his catch count. Uh, that play actually came in handy for him. All right, I did not see... Um... Etiquette star stats during the candy, so I'm gonna try to take a look during the stall two tier. Let's take it. Uh, it is not Ooh, great. Not good. <laughs> um, the speed, the speed is gonna, it's gonna get outsped by Plains Rapidash. 
Um, so the speed is not great, not awful. Uh, the real problem for him is going to be that special attack. It's only 112 special attack. Um, so that's that's a that's pretty low. Matt Star is Matt Star. I think is going to be fine. Uh, the speed looked good. Uh, the special attack again, probably a little on the lower side, but uh, but probably slightly higher than it gets. Um, my guess is both will have to be using psychics in Toga's gym, which is really the big uh, the big draw of having higher special attack. Uh, so not optimal stars by any stretch, but potentially workable for both. Uh, etiquette star should actually be a good guy on Monroe 5. If you have, like, really bad speed, you can get x fed by it, but, um, etiquette's 116 yeah. right now, it should be fine. It, yeah, it, the, the Pidgeot there is 128, uh, so it, it, it'll gain a number of levels before that. It should be okay, but, again, worth monitoring. Yeah, when we saw Etiquette pick up that fire down there, he'll be using that a little bit later to evolve his, uh, evolve picks. Meanwhile, Alwo, uh, going through the Tower Deshi Games fight, uh, pretty much the same strategy he used in Hideout, he'll be using here again. Uh, level 32 Pikachu. <laughs> wow. That chancy experience coming in here. Yeah. I want him to go for helping hand. Oh, hmm. yeah. It was a. He might have died if he missed the range, and then. Right. Yeah. I think he would have gotten it just based on how far down that bar went. But um, good to be safe there. So that that would not end well <laughs> if it didn't hit the range. So, Etiquette just leaving um, Pokemon Mansion now uh, and heading into Blade's Gym. Um, there might be an emote that uh, certain folks like to spam at this point in the run. If so, go ahead and go ahead and throw those down in the chat. Um, and Blade's Gym is a quiz, just as it is in the in the main the original games. Um, so, given how fast we're mashing at this point in the game, um, you actually have to be pretty careful to make sure you're giving the correct answers. Uh, the kind of standard format is to go uh, one, two, 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 one, which is first one, second one, three times, and then the first one. Uh, but it's very easy to, uh, if you're not careful, give the wrong answer. And if you give the wrong answer, you end up facing an optional trainer. Meanwhile, Matt going through uh, the Ted fight. Ted fight can be scary because he has an electrode that uses Thunderbolt, and uh, that can obviously crit, or which would KO a Starmie, and it can also paralyze, which is also a problem. So, uh, no issue there for Matt. Etiquette starting playing now. Um, guys, uh, get out to Rapidash. Shouldn't be a problem unless he gets. Uh, crit or something like that. Uh, we'll see. Okay, we got the standard confused right turn one. Yep. Got a 75% chance to use confused ray, uh, just anecdotally, and uh, that's what he did there. Yeah, the, the big issue that Etiquette could run into is one, getting crit by the Rapid Ash, or two, getting burnt. Um, obviously, the, the first one is much more of a problem than the second one. So hopefully we see neither of those. Yeah, etiquette and uh, match catch count a little bit lower than typical around this location. You typically are seeing like 45, 46 here, but um, both of them have uh, a lot of evolutions that they'll be getting throughout kind of the next 20-ish minutes or so. Yep, and etiquette already got Doe Duo 
uh, to level 40 on this fight, so that will evolve after this fight. And just as Etiquette finishes up playing, now it's time for Matt to start. So right now we're gonna see Matt do those quest quiz and the etiquette seeing the evolution. Yeah. Meanwhile, Aloe's on Route 17. Uh, he'll be looking for as many catches as he can get as well. Because uh, uh, you know, sitting on 35, which is not bad, but still needs a few pokes. Yeah, I don't know if anyone saw it. It was very scary. Um, like, directly after Alwa did the trainer skip, the lore ran out, so the text came up. And oh, it was yeah. Very scary. <laughs> yeah, I find that happens with yeah. me. If I use the lore really early on Route 6, and then Shamtok, you'll get the- it like, had to like, kind of run up and down a bit on Route 6, mm -hmm. so then I'll get the text box of right as I'm passing in between the two trainers. Uh, let's see what the Owl is looking for here. Owl does have 54 planned right now. Um, so, uh, I think kind of the important thing to get here is, uh, the Ponyta. Um, even though Owl does have the fast Arcanine ride, um, Arcanine is a lot lower level, so you want to see that Ponyta so that your ride Pokemon is gaining a ton of levels. Um, also, shout out to Etiquette for talking to the Rapidash. <laughs> you know what, you gotta Way check on your big. ride once in a while, you know? He, Rapidash was happy that he won his prior fight, so you know we we, we had to uh, we we had to check in with him after that gym battle. Okay, I know I've been wrong a lot about a lot of things. Etiquette, I, like I'd say Etiquette would do something and then he doesn't, but I think he's gonna check this top left can. Oh, never mind, never mind. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, he'll check uh, the one on the right, I think. Well, that, uh, well, that one, he's the closest. He got to that it. One. He's closest to the he one on the it. right. Oh, oh okay. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, oh, he got it. Uh, wrong again. Uh, uh, I guess. Wow, what are the odds of that? Oh, one in one. Very good. <laughs> yeah, fixed cans in this game. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah. Uh, as Matt finishes up playing, he also is going to get the, the Dodrio off of that fight. We will probably see both. Or, all three runners use a trio after it's an option to use it. You can use other things, but Dotrio is a popular one. Aloe going straight for Rapidash here. Um, that's definitely an unconventional catch. Uh, but if you can't find Ponyta, you might as well just get Rapidash. Missed the circle just barely. Yeah, that's one shake, man. One shake out of that. This, I was gonna say, probably want to use Razzes at this point. Um, he's got a good number of Ultra Ball. Uh, one shake, <laughs> one shake, <laughs> <straight in>. ball. <laughs> they uh -oh. they say that. No, <laughs> that would have been that would have been hilarious. Uh, oh. Uh, and it's about to run, unfortunately. You could see that um, from the animation. When a Pokemon circle does not disappear, um, but it makes an animation, that's, that's an indicator that's going to run. So that Rapidash was about to run, and you saw that Allo went ahead and ran in that fight. And he's not punished for it too, too much because he gets the Ponyta. I would make like an RNG manipulation joke, but I've I've already heard chat complaints. Better jokes or no more jokes from me now. Yeah, I I could try jokes, but oh boy, I would that would end poorly. <laughs> So 
Yeah, Etiquette and Mag are kind of making their way through. Um, yeah, they're they're Arabic doing surge. they're doing a gym rush right now. I mean, Lieutenant Surge is scald three times. Blaine was scald four times. This fight is psychic three times. So, um, this is definitely the gym rush portion. And your star me at this point is just completely over leveled. You're at a you're a level forty six star me going up against mid to mid 20s to low 30s pokes and they just don't stand a chance um, a little bit more interesting when uh, these runners will get to Silfco because there are a couple of fights that uh, can really turn things quite quickly I did notice something interesting about Alwo's catching that I didn't realize as it was happening um I noticed earlier that um, both Ghastly and Haunter were marked, despite I had visually seen just like a Ghastly in the box. Turns out he caught one of both of them, so... Oh, wow. Did I miss the, I missed the Haunter catch? <laughs> yeah, I did too. Man. I don't know how. Yeah, that makes three of us. Hello, already at 40 kind of uh, like... on here. Gonna get... No, Parody has Pidgey already. Yeah, it's getting get the side up after this fight. Up to Golduck, so that'll be needed at another Evo. Uh, so we're inching closer and closer to 50. Um, at this point, just getting those final evolutions. Um, worthy of note, these trainers that Aloe's going through, their vision is... It, they need some, you know, corrective vision. Because uh, they, they, their vision range is like one tile. Uh, so you just can't run into them directly. <laughs> but um, fortunately, Aloe able to make that, make through, make through those trainers and off he goes to uh, Fuchsia, and soon he'll be on Route 21, getting ready to get his own star. Mm -hmm. One thing Chad is noting is that um, Etiquette may not have caught Thunderbolt right now. Um, typically, you teach Thunderbolt right after you fight Surge. However, you don't actually need Thunderbolt until Sabrina, and sometimes, I believe Etiquette taught Hydro Pump Slot too. So sometimes having Recover on an Archer can be good if you don't have a lot of Super Potions. Again, I don't know how true. Um, if that's something that he thought about, it looks like he might just be doing the menu here instead. But just, uh, yeah, just a potential like... thought to have. Yeah, so he's doing all the healing and, and the menu. Yeah, looks like he's taking it now. Uh, also wanted to know, this was actually a relatively new find. I believe shout out to Etchy for this one. If you noticed, Etiquette uh, moved over to the side there a little bit uh, after he left Erica's gym. Um, so it turns out, at least our understanding of this is when there's a fly animation, um, if there's anything directly above your head, when you fly, um, it will, you won't see the full fly motion. So you won't see like the Pikachu going all the way up on the balloons. Uh, like you're actually just saw an Aloe screen over there. Uh, so keep an eye on etiquette screen. You should see a more limited animation coming up here. So you can see there was just that fade out that saves a couple of seconds. Uh, so little no, little micro dude. optimization for etiquette and at that level, you know, saving those couple of seconds, hey, it worked great for him. Is this Lord 1070 or star not? for Allo? Uh yeah, that is Lord. Uh, okay, yeah. uh yeah, Allo that, used that is the Lord. super lore. Uh, yeah, I, I knew that he ran out of lures and I knew he had the super lore. I just didn't see it get used, so I wasn't yeah. sure. That's like a ten seventy CP, so um Yeah. Slightly above, above average, average on the CP. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we'll see how the, the 
distribution of stats turns out for him. Hopefully it's, you know, again, you're looking for that good special attack. You're looking for that good speed. Those are the two big ones for Starmie. Um, that is not the island you want to be on. <laughs> that, that, that is a trainer. That is not a water stone. Uh, but getting the tentacle, very nice. Yeah. So... And now etiquette is in Sylphco, uh, so the first semi-interesting fight, and things are about to ramp up quite a bit for him, um, is this rival fight. So this will be a, a, a two-on-one fight. Um, the first Pokemon that Blue has is an Executor, which is a Grass Psychic type. Starmie is a Water Psychic type. Starmie has no moves for this Executor. Uh, so you bring out the second controller uh, you can choose between Doduo and Rapidash um, here you'll see etiquette X attack the Do the Do Trio and then use Drill Pack on the Executor to take it out um, even at minus um, minus attack nature because we set uh, all the natures to modest earlier that Do Trio still has no problem taking out that Executor um, and then you'll see the reverse happen on this part of the fight. Uh, you'll see uh, Starmie take back over and scald the Charizard with some help from the from the support trainer in the form of an special attack. Also, shoutouts to Dynam on Tech for Magmar Strats on this fight. Yes. Hey, you want to talk about Magmar Strat? I don't even know what they are. <laughs> Essentially, it's... Um, so, if you catch a Magmar, uh, which... If you're able to catch a Magmar, good for you. Um, you're able to use Fire Punch on the Executor. So, you can use Magmar instead of using... Um, instead of using the Dodrio. So, you use an X-Attack on the Magmar... Um, and that will go ahead and knock out the uh, that'll go ahead and knock out the executor as well. Yeah, and now for all you runners at home uh, who maybe wanted to try out this strat, um, very important that you, it has to be a lured magmar for this strat to work. And etiquette is going into we'll call it one of the pivotal fights of this run. Uh, this is a this is a double fight, but a little different of a double fight than we've seen previously, um, because your rival is actually your your teammate here. Um, so your rival has a Cubone, and God love him, your, your rival's Cubone is trying and trying hard, but it doesn't help very much. Um, meanwhile, you're facing some kind of scary Pokemon over on the other side. Uh, so, actually, what you saw turn one out of that fight was, uh, we kind of call it like a VGC opening. Uh, the the Electro goes boom, and then the Muck protects itself, um, which a little bit of a little bit of a, an annoying opening. It takes the possibility of a three-turn fight off the table. Uh, still doable. It's probably the median outcome. Instead of getting thunderbolted by Electrode, because that gets really annoying. Um, yeah, as you can see there, Cubone, Bone Meringue, getting super effective damage on the Weezing and doing a third of its health. Thanks so much for the help, Cubone. We, we really appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Owl's uh, screen, he's doing a uh, Starmie menu right now. Uh, this Starmie, uh, I would say, is not ideal. Um, I'll check the stats on the Scald. Uh, menu, but I'm pretty sure it's like very similar to Etiquette's Starmie, with, um, with which also uh, not ideal. Let's see here. Yeah. And Etiquette just had to heal on this one uh, because he got he got hit by the Weezing. He got hit by a Sucker Punch by Eradicate after getting self destruct hit. Uh, so this could get a little scary because. Uh, probably going to have to heal again because once again he's in red health if that Raticate uses Sucker Punch, which it, it's in, that Starmie is in kill range um, 
He uses the super potion there, and it would have attacked the Starmie. Uh, but fortunately, Cubone's a pal, and just goes ahead and knocks out the, the Raticate. So, finally, at the very end of the fight, Cubone coming in, collection saving etiquette a turn. Yeah, Allo has a 114 special attack, 117 speed, so he'll be speed and he's high. One speed. seeing. Oh, okay, never mind, never mind. He's, he's yeah. got the second controller there we go. out now for head. Yeah, he'll be speed tying the Rapidash, and the special attack is um, okay. Not great, not horrible. Uh, meanwhile, so, on uh, that screen, screen. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, he got he got Thunderbolt hit by the uh, by the electrode, so he's got to heal that off. Uh, and then after that turn one Thunderbolt, it goes ahead and uses self destruct. Can Cubone be a pal? Yeah, there you go. There you go. So this is actually a very safe four turn fight, um, unless Weezing does a bad bad thing. Uh, but this is usually a very safe four turn fight because you've only got one Pokemon on the other side. Uh, for Archer and his Grunt Apprentice. Yeah, and Weezing did not do the thing. So that, that actually was a pretty nice fight for uh, for Matt. Usually you're looking for a four-turn Archer if you can get it. That's probably slightly above average. Five-turn is probably slightly below average. Um, so getting a four-turn there is nice. Etiquette's, I think, was five. Um, so probably just below average. So Matt making up a little bit of time on this fight. And getting the Omanite evolution. Oh my star. Oh my star. I haven't seen Oma Star in a run in so long. I'm so excited. Yeah. Shout out to the Fossey Puss. That is that is nice. How many did I just have we seen in Mansion? I've seen at least two. Ditto uh, and those more in those kind of catch em all categories, uh, you know, can be a struggle. So, yeah, hope I, I hope I see that on my next uh, all obtainables run. <laughs> you know, I still have never done an AOP run, uh, it's so but... fun. At some point, at some point, I gotta, uh -huh. I gotta join them. Yeah, they're long, but it's, honestly, like, if you just, like, join a race, it makes it so much better, because you can just, like, complain about the bad spawns that you're getting <laughs> with everybody else. I've already got my wife complaining about how long the any percent NMS runs are. <laughs> well, well, well. Just you wait until <laughs> I break if those out. I got out, the run I'm, for you. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be sleeping on the couch, <laughs> just permanently. <laughs> Um, etiquette about to start the Geo 3 fight, and you would think, oh, well, those, the, the, or the Geo 2 fight, you'd think, oh, the first Geo fight was really, really scary. Uh, surely Geo 2 is as well, and it's really, really not. It's a, it's a guaranteed four turn fight. Uh, Persian always uses fake out turn one, or almost always uses fake out turn one. Um, so, we deal with that. Well, Unfortunately, that Etiquette an used a, an X attack instead of an <laughs> X special attack. Um, so he's going to go ahead and and uh, take an extra turn to remedy that. Uh, but he'll just stall the rest of the three Pokemon from here. Aloe, unfortunately, got one of the questions wrong um, and is facing one of the optional trainers over in Blaine's gym. I did not see which question it was that he got incorrect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just... Uh, it's easy, very, very easy to, when you're mashing quickly and uh, just trying to optimize, very easy to hit one of these trainers. Yeah, when I play, when I do this run, I tend to try to menu very fast, except for playing Gym. I always take very, very carefully. It's so easy to just accidentally go one text box too far and um, yeah. select the wrong option. Absolutely. Now Matt starting the Geo fight as well. Um, so Etiquette has gotten the 48 Pokemon that you need just um, uh, through non-gifting meets. I guess Magikarp is too. But he will go ahead and pack that up to 50. 
by getting the Lapras, which you can find on the seventh floor of this building. And then there is a Porygon at the south end of, of Saffron City. So he'll get those two gifts. Um, he'll go ahead and get up to, uh, as he almost went to the sixth floor, another common uh, common mistake when you're trying to go fast in this game. Um, so he'll go ahead, he, he'll get 50, and he'll be able to get into Koba's gym um, when he when he wants to, which will be right after Sabrina. Mm -hmm. Just looking at uh, Matt's tracker right now, so Matt doesn't have the Lapras and Porygon yet because he hasn't finished Scopo. Also does not have Weezing marked, and also does not have the Nine Tails marked. So um, either those were not marked, or he has not gotten those yet. Okay. Probably mm -hmm. is waiting on the uh, coughing to evolve. I believe um, Alwo is speed tied with the Rapidash, so we will oh, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully you can just win this speed tie. That's the, that's the ideal situation. It's just that easy. <laughs> yeah. There's number 50 for etiquette. And let's see how this speed tie goes. Oh, well, not it doesn't it, need the speed oh. tie, but no burn. Uh, that's out. fine. Mm-hmm. You take that every time. Yep. yep. Meanwhile, Etiquette gonna be doing uh, the final shop of this run. And you can get some Hyper Potions, um, some Max Propels, and a bunch of X items. Does buy the X Special Defenses, so he at least gives himself the option to do Risky Strats in the Elite Four. And... Like buying the X defense for uh, Giovanni. We'll also be buying some full heals. He's ready to go for. You're ready to go for into Sabrina's gym now. Yeah. Uh, now one thing Sabrina... to know. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, okay. Uh... <laughs> Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina's gym go, has an entry requirement. It's level 45. You have to have a Pokemon that's at least level 45. You know who doesn't have a level 45 Pokemon? Sabrina! So Sabrina shouldn't even be admitted to her own gym. Anyway. Yeah, one thing to note here, actually, is that Etiquette is uh, pretty low HP right now. Um, so yes. I wonder if he's gonna do uh, some menuing before Sabrina. Uh, that's probably what I would do in this situation, but um, time and time again through the front, we have seen Etiquette do things that that <laughs> are different than I would do, so I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah, and normally you're on good HP here. You've just taken damage from uh, Persian's Fake Out, but this, this extra damage you're seeing is because he X-attacked on that fight, uh, so had to spend the extra turn uh, getting the X special attack up. Meanwhile, Persian decided to go ahead and use Slash, and I believe crit there, so uh, that's why you're seeing him so low. But he's going to make a full menu out of this. He's going to go ahead and get rid of everything uh, that isn't Starmie or Rapidash from his party. Normally, you do that after, uh, but here he's you know he's got a menu anyway, so making full advantage of that menu um, and. Doing that, also putting X special attacks at the end of his at the end of his menu, so they're easier to to get to. Uh, common mistake here is you're trying to go, you're, especially at this point in the run, you're trying to go as fast as you can, and you've just shopped, so uh, you end up accidentally hitting, let's say X special defense instead of the X special attack, um, and you end up spending an extra turn on this fight that you don't have to. So etiquette. You know, realizing he had to menu there, went ahead and did some of the some of the things that you'd normally do after this fight, and just got him out of the way now. I will also note that um, Matt also did buy the X Special Defense and the X Defense, so it may also end up doing risky strats. We shall see. So interesting here, um, etiquette. Used the two 
um, do X special attacks, but did not use an X speed. Um, he did get turn one light screen. Um, so we'll see how that turns out for him. I believe the Alakazam outspeed. Yeah, if you don't actually just Alakazam. But actually, Alakazam doesn't actually do that much damage. So if you want to try to save an extra item and not get, like, turnaround later, then um, skipping one here is, like, a pretty ideal situation. Yeah. And it, it turned out just fine for him. Um, and he'll, he'll be able to get through the rest of that fight now. Um, yeah, my my that guess box. is that because he used that extra X attack, he was maybe concerned about turnarounds, and so I tried to skip one here. Oh, uh, that, that's a great point. That's just my guess, I could be very wrong about that. That's a great point. Uh, Matt also got turn one light screen. Um, not ideal. Ideally, you'd like to see no light screen, and you just, after two turns of setup, you just go. But I've I've personally seen that once. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> usually happen. doesn't happen. It, it, it <laughs> does it doesn't happen. Um, what you don't want to see is turn two light screen. It's just another turn you have to just kind of sit there and you end up hyper potioning out of that. Um, but yeah, another very safe fight there for for Matt. He'll uh, he, he'll be uh, off to Koga's gym here momentarily. Yeah, so one thing to note, if you have coughing in your party that's like from Ted onwards, uh, it should be evolved by now. One thing I am thinking is a possibility, well, other than it just didn't get marked and I didn't see it. Oh, there's coughing. Never mind. Never mind. You know <laughs> yeah. what? Ignore me. There's coughing. I was going to go into this whole other like theory about why, what Matt was going to do. Yeah, I have had that happen where it's like, where's my coughing? Where's my Evo? Where, where did it go? Yeah, um, probably put posited a bit later it. than normal. Yeah, so, I mean, he's perfectly fine here, and I believe he's also got the Firestone, and so that'll be, um, that'll be number 50 for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, Etiquette going to, um, one of, uh, our favorite Oh, fights. Kaden. Kaden, 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 you friend. Um, so this fight, Caden's just got scary moves, man. Uh, he's got Protect. He's got Moon Blast, which can lower special attack. He's got Toxic. And the worst one, it's Minimize. Uh, this fight, you know, you just are like, just get me through this fight. Uh, so turn one Toxic there. Um, Etiquette doing a, what I consider to be a very smart play. He's just going to go ahead and... and force through the, the poison damage uh, because he doesn't want a situation where uh, Muck starts minimizing or protecting. So he, he continuing right through here. Yeah. He will take some damage. He'll, he'll have to heal that off, but um, smart play, uh, in, at least in my view. Yeah, I definitely agree with that play. I mean, uh, the amount of times like, I used to heal uh, the, the poison there, and the amount of time I saw I've minimized on that heal turn, never again. Yeah, I mean you could get protect, and it does absolutely nothing. And mm -hmm. but if you get minimized, and you can very easily start missing. Uh, so, um, oh, good play there. Now we come to Koga. Uh, you know, people talk about uh, Caden being the real leader of this gym, and, and that's, at least from a speedrunning perspective, that is the harder of the two fights, uh, certainly the more RNG-driven of the two fights. Um, Koga can be pretty annoying, too. Of course, all of his Pokémon, and in fact, every Pokémon in this gym has Protect, which just wastes a turn. Um, and you're trying, at this point in the game, to really conserve Psychic PP. Uh, you need, I believe it's four Psychics coming out of this gym. Uh, that sounds you right. Can get away with, I think you can get away with three, but you really want four. Uh, 
and actually that's an ideal turn one there just using protect on the setup turn uh which saves a potential psychic there for etiquette so you want to see as few of those protects as possible both because they take a few seconds about five seconds per protect uh, there's one from Venomoth, uh, but also because you're trying to maintain uh, PP usage. If you have good enough special attack, which Etiquette decidedly does not here, um, you can use Scald. You have to have at least 128 special attack on uh, on the Starmie to do it for uh, Venomoth and 131 on the Weasley. Uh, Muck will not go down to a Scald. So you have to use Psychic there. And you see yet another Protect. Uh, so he's got five Psychics. He'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt now heading into Caden uh, while Allo does uh, the blue fight. Um, I'm assuming Allo is just going to do Dodrio here. I haven't, honestly, I haven't really been looking. I think so. I think okay. it's a lot too. Okay. Let's see how match Caden goes. Moonblast, special okay, attack Moonblast. fell. Yes, so, and, there, and there's a protect. Uh, so, unfortunately <laughs> now, in all likelihood, the Beedrill will not go down to a Scald. Uh, so frequent tactic here is to use Hydro Pump. Um, for that reason, because the, the Beedrill just used another Protect. So he's already down to six Psychics. So, uh, we worth monitoring. Duo out. That oh. is not not ideal, uh, because Dodillo is a, a range. It's about a, it's basically about a 50-50 when you take into consideration, like, all the attack stats you can have and all the rolls. So hopefully he just gets it. Easy. Easy he, and he did. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> He did. Also worth noting, as I said earlier, that that is a minus attack nature do duo because you set the nature in Celadon City, mm -hmm. still able to take out the executor. Yeah. Um, just going back to Matt, I am. I think we're all definitely concerned about that tech account um, because you really want to be coming out of Koga with uh, a few more. I don't fully remember Matt's special attack. Um, I don't remember it being that that high. It, it was not. It was not good enough to guarantee. Okay, and we're seeing toxic here. This you have to heal off. Okay, that's that's a good one to see. Um, I mean, at this point, you might just go for a Scald. Venomoth would be the one you would go for, uh, just because his Psychic PP is so low. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's exactly what he's about to do. Yeah. And he saves I, the Psychic PP in the process. I agree with this play, even if it's not like 100% yeah. guaranteed. Nice just play. Save, you need that Psychic PP, for sure. Yeah, and then he'll Scald this goal bat. That'll go down. Or Thunderbolt it. Yeah, both work. All right, so uh, Etiquette just kind of no. going through the cutscene for Geo. Uh, Matt just going to be finishing up Koga here, but Alo is going to be heading. Uh, and he accidentally Archer thunderbolted, double. but he's not punished oh. for it. Okay. That saves a psychic, and now his psychic PP is just fine. That was such a big brain. <laughs> that is that is a play. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, meanwhile, Alo is on Archer two. Um, so, hopefully that goes well. Hopefully no Thunderbolts from Electrode. That would be preferable. Okay, thanks. Ooh, that is a Thunderbolt thunder from Electrode. That is... Yes. But no Protect from Muck, so Muck goes down. Yep, and I feel like Cubone attacking by Electrode makes it more likely to boom next turn. Just like anecdotally. Uh, agreed. Agreed. So, so Etiquette's like... wandering into this eighth and final gym uh, with this gym leader who we don't know who it is. Oh, there are these floor pads that look awfully familiar from somewhere. Uh, it's almost like we've seen them a couple of times before in the game. Mm. Wonder who the leader here could be. Probably Professor Oak. That's my guess. Yeah, that sounds right. Any guesses, Greta? 
something funny that I cannot think of. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hey, maybe maybe it's blue from the first game. Wouldn't that be a plot twist? Well, that could be that. Oh, well, you know who it could be? It could be Mina from outside the SSN, since she's here from Alola. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's see. I'm assuming Etiquette's going to go 2C here, and he is. Uh, this is a nice little dangerous fight against Anita King. Uh, if you are pressed for time or trying to catch up, a lot of times you will see a 1C Hydro Pump of this Nita King. Um, of course, Hydro Pump is an 80% hit chance. Uh, if that other 20% comes to fruition, though, uh, you are very likely to get Mega Horned, and that is very likely to take out your Starmies. So, uh, dangerous fight, but etiquette by going 2C and just scalding with the next special attack goes ahead and removes the risk there. Aloe threw um, Archer 2. He actually had that the same Archer 2 fight that uh, that Matt did, that for that four-turn very safe fight. Uh, so good fight for him there. Uh, question from chat. How far ahead is Edda right now? Uh, let's see, Edda is uh, on the last trainer uh, in the ace gym. Uh, Matt is just in the cutscene before. I'd probably give it a solid, what, two to three minutes ahead right now? Yeah, I was going to say that's about two minutes ahead would be my guess. He's got two trainers that are in front of him. He's doing this little ride up to uh, up, up to Viridian City. Um, that's about right. Um, will be interesting to see if, if Matt starts to try and take some riskier strats um, to try to catch up. Or if he's going to say, okay, I'm going to let Etiquette go and just make sure I've got a good time for second place, which he's, he's very much on track for. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll be we'll be interesting to see how he handles this. Yeah, one thing for Matt to consider too, and I'm not 100% sure what his pace is, but uh, if he's just going to go for that second place, if he, he will probably want to try to push for being above that median time. Yep. For those not familiar with our, our format, basically the amount of points in second place you get will depend on their time compared to everybody else's time in the round. I believe the median is around a 309. 309, um, but there were some runs this morning, each of which were fast, so mm -hmm. I believe that median time is heading downward. Uh, so. 309.45, my guess will be probably will not do it. But that said, Matt's also, in my estimation, well ahead of that 309 pace. Yeah. Etiquette finishing up uh, Giovanni. Very uh, safe fight from him here. What he did was he... Oh, oh, oh! So once he fight from Matt, um, he missed the Hydra Pump but the Nita King's Megahorn did not KO, so what he's done is just gone ahead and brought out the Rapidash uh, to heal up. And he's going to use Hydro Pump here again, and down goes the Nita King. So, a nice adaptation there. A um, little bit fortunate that the, um, that the Nita King did not take that out. Maybe he recognized he had higher defense. And if you do have that higher defense, sometimes you can just... Uh, be pretty safe, like, even if this thing misses, I'm going to probably, probably live the hit. So, uh, good identification, um, good strategy from Matt there, playing that. Yeah, I also found it interesting that uh, after bringing out TC, he went for Hydro Pump again, even though he could have just stalled Exit Hacked. Uh, yeah, and it I actually saved fine. him. Um, it saved him the heal outside of the fight, so that was a nice mm -hmm. play. All right, we will now see what he does, because my guess is this is going to be a 1C on Giovanni, and it is. Um, again, it's a much faster fight, because you're only selecting one set of moves instead of two. Um, but this fight can be dangerous. It's The first Pokemon Giovanni's got is a Dub Trio, which outspeeds you. 
and Wills. Upon realizing that you've used an X uh, special defense, or an X defense, excuse me, will start using high critical rate <laughs> hit rate moves on you, like Slash. Um, so it is, it's a dangerous fight, but you can save a good 20 seconds if it goes the way you want it to. So far, so good. Um, no crit on that first earthquake. And no crit on the second one. He's just got one more he's got to get through. And see, the little bit of a cheeky move from, from Geo going to Slash. Didn't matter. Did not get the crit there either. So uh, smooth sailing from there for, for Matt uh, throughout the rest of this fight. And it looks like he will not have to heal uh, for Rival 5 because he's got enough HP to survive a pitch on Yep, yeah, speaking of Rival 5, that's where Etiquette's at right now. Um, looks like a pretty smooth fight. Um, got Vileplume to come out second, then the Marowak. Uh, is able to Psychic the Marowak because he'll be up plus 4 special attack. Um, if you're, if Marowak comes out second, um, you are forced to Scald Marowak and then use NX Speed on that turn. And the reason for that is because Raichu can come out either 3rd or 4th and you need to have the X Speed out before Right too. Yep. And that's why the notes in, in uh, certainly in Eevee say always X speed turn two. Uh, so the right has got 140 speed. Uh, you can technically get away with it if you're higher than that, but I just always do it anyway because who knows. Um, but yeah, rule of thumb X speed turn two on that fight always. His badge check's done. Um, Allo is heading out of um, Silfco and going to go take on Sabrina. And Matt is going to go ahead and get into uh, Rival 5, where Etiquette just was. Uh, so a little bit of a transition here for the next 30 seconds for all three of our runners. What are your expectations for, for Etiquette and Matt doing safe versus risky bets from here on out? Because I'm feeling um, pretty confident that Etiquette's j just going to kind of go safely. Yeah, uh, it most sounds of the way like through. he has no reason to really go risky here unless he just wants to like flex on everyone for no reason. And yeah, I, Etiquette is I, not XG, so agree. he's not going to throw. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Uh, yeah. If this were a 30 second gap instead of what's probably more like a two minute gap, uh, you would see a situation where um, you you'd probably start to take some calculated risks. But etiquette using safe strats, never say never, right? Because things can happen. Uh, but using safe strats should be in decent shape the rest of this race. Um, you can see one of the, the really risky fights uh, is this one. It's the Caroline fight. Or Naomi. Caroline. Naomi, yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong uh, victory road fight. This is the Naomi fight. And runners who are, are trying to make up some time will one see this fight, but this Kangaskhan has crunch. And Starmie no like crunch because uh, that is a dark type move. So, uh, taking that risk completely out, though his special attack is so bad that he did not hit the Hydro Pump range. It's fine, you just end up scalding. Uh, just a little slower. Yeah, on my turn, I actually thought it killed, and then I was like, why is Rapid out his HP going down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, not Matt is through the, the rival time. fight. I'll uh, make it his way through Sabrina's gym. Uh, I did notice during uh, his Saffron shop that I did buy an extra uh, revive. Um, so probably just for safety, might have used some before. I just want to keep one or a couple in the bag. And there is uh, just, you know, if, if you are in that situation, and you're like, I really need a revive just to be safe. There is one um, at the end of Giovanni's gym. So if you're 
about to head out the door, you'll see an, an, an item ball right there. That is a revive. So if you're ever in a position, you don't necessarily have to buy one, but there's one available. Sabrina Gym is full of spinning trainers, so Owl is taking it safely, making sure he doesn't want to hit any of those, and made it up all the way up to Sabrina. Nice hypnosis with this on, uh, on Etiquette's screen. Mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. hypno is always a little, a little scary, because it's got hypnosis. It just troll you. Yeah, and that Hypno, if you have, like, really, really good special attack, you can just, like, Hydro Pump one-shot it. That feels so good. If I Hypno yeah, loves nice. using Hypnosis on you. Yeah, usually that's on the order of, like, 140 special attack. You start to get into that, you know, better than 50-50 range on that one. Um... Mm -hmm. If you're below that, it's just it's not worth it. You just you use your Thunderbolt and then a Scald if you need to, or if it, it's done enough, you just Thunderbolt again. Uh, also seeing a 2C fight on on Naomi from Matt. That's I think that's the safe move at this point. I mean, it obviously is the safe move. I think it's the right one. Um, he's able to, unlike Etiquette, get the one shot. Um, if he were a little bit closer, that could be a different conversation, but I think at this point, sure up your second place, get the safety strats in, um, you know, he's, he's on pace for a good time, and, you know, lock that in. Etiquette hitting, or missing um, Alexa, uh, as my great, as my... Uh, Amazon-enabled devices go off in my house. <laughs> uh, uh, great. Uh, so that's one of the more... It's it's the final of the kind of technical skips. You kind of just go below her and get around her that way. Uh, another skip that uh, that your your humble narrator likes to, to miss from time to time, so... Yeah, it, I'd never do that. We'd never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Never happens. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Not a single time. Yeah. Meanwhile, Etiquette is through the difficult part of Caroline, um, getting that Jinx out of the way. Uh, Jinx control as well, uh, between Lovely Kiss, Ice Beam, um, and just missing hydro pumps because you have to get a hydro pump to, to uh, one hit KO there. Um, so nice, nice Caroline fight there from Etiquette and onward for him. Meanwhile, Matt having a pretty clean Nelson fight. Uh, no hypnosis, hip, hypnosis. And gets the crit. <laughs> oh, well, okay, they didn't need a crit. Did not need a crit on the slow bro. I thought you got it on the. On the What is the plural of hypnosis? I don't know. Hypnoses. Hip hypnoses, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, no hypnoses. That happened there. And Alo, uh, just doing that big menu right after um, Sabrina. Um, pretty soon, it will be the check for his uh, 50 Pokemon cut. And then he'll be making his way in to Kogi's gym, fighting Kaden, fighting Koga. Etiquette just finishing up the the 20 pushes of the the uh, very large boulder that he also pushed through the pushed through the floor, uh, which opens up the the last uh, last little wall here, and you get to go up against Dawson, who you cannot skip in in this uh, <laughs> in this version of uh, of the, so this is no mount skips. Um, oh, he gets crit by the. Gets crit by the Lickitung there, so he's going to summon the second controller, heal, um, just to have a, a make sure this is a safe fight. Mm -hmm. Mm 
actually put on an, an extra X uh, special attack. I think he may not have X special yeah, attack. Yeah, he did not X special turn one. He just went, uh, he psychic right away. Yeah, and I think I think that actually stems back to what we were talking about earlier because he used that uh, X attack on on Giovanni instead of the X special attack, so he doesn't want Bruno turn around. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't know if that was intentional. I mean, I know etiquette has a lot of weird, uh, unusual strats, but I. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what if that was just like a mistake or if, uh, something happened. We were like some yeah. some plan there. Anyways, etiquette not getting the full restore. That no signals. Uh, so yeah. Safe locking in Agatha. safe Agatha. Or really risky Agatha, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's. I don't think he's going for a really risky Agatha. I'm just gonna you know, <laughs> go ahead and assume, just given the circumstances here. Agatha's. Agatha's not, certainly not the most risky fight of the Elite Four. Um, you know, the, the way we have it, it's almost like a decision tree, right? Like. If, mm -hmm. if turn one you get crunch, well that's misery, misery. But yeah. if you get if you get uh, paralyzed and you get uh, power of love, like uh, we have that pretty well diagrammed out as to okay, here's what you do here. But even then, there's just built-in outcomes where you're like, mm, I don't want to risk this right now. No, yeah, and etiquette's absolutely in position to to eliminate that risk. Uh, yeah, low defense armies, um, getting crit by crunch, getting defense drop by crunch, those can all be pretty bad situations. Or if you end up having to set up on v and if you get, like, keep getting paralyzed by Thunderbolt, or getting crit by Thunderbolt, those can all be... While all of those are unlikely, those can all lead to disaster if they do happen, so... No reason for etiquette to risk that right now. If you run this game for any length of time, You've seen all those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Also, looks like uh, Koga's wheezing exploded. Ooh, that is very, very nice for Albo. Yeah, so um, not only do you kind of just like save a turn, I guess, when it uses explosion, so you don't have to KO it yourself, but also um, you end up being lower HP and. Um, the other Pokemon are more likely to try to attack you at your low HP instead of using Protect. So it's uh, time save on time save there. Uh, that is picking up the full restore. Picking that up full restore. Mm -hmm. Indicates your 1T Agatha here, which I I would, would overall agree with. Trying to just kind of uh, push his time to make sure he's above that average. And it's not too much of a risk to do 1T Agatha. It's not like a one seed lance or one seed champion fight where it's like you get crit, you die. Congratulations! Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's a little less risky than that. So uh, I again agree with the move there. Now Bruno for etiquette, uh, probably the most straightforward of the. Uh, of the Elite Five, we'll call them. Um, but there's only four of them. There's there's Lorelei, oh, there's oh, Bruno, yeah, there's yeah. Agatha, and there's Lance. And now that's it. Yeah, there's there's no fifth trainer. No. What, what, what am I thinking? Sorry, it's been it's been a long day. I, I, I mm, you've been almost three I'm hours in this run. I know that can that can do something to your uh, your thought process. Yeah. There are only four trainers. I'm confused though. I thought we were gonna fight Professor Oak. Mm. Well, I thought we were gonna fight Professor <laughs> Oak at the eighth gym, and that didn't happen. Oh yeah. So. Maybe this time. Yeah. Oh, you're saying like Professor yes. Oak like replacing plants? Yeah, he's he's sick today, so. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I wonder if you get good benefits when you're working at the airport. 
You can ask I just Mom Larry. Here. I don't think you do. <laughs> Shout out to Larry. Larry. Larry is Larry is in all of us. Of Larry. Yes. Uh, noting here that Etiquette has 132 special attack on his star. Um, I expect that he will do see the land play regardless, but if he were in a situation where he needed to 1C that fight, um, Dragonite would be a range. So, um, yeah, this this uh, this is the star of all time for Etiquette. Um, and actually, bringing out a bird, so the rule on 2C Agatha is you need either a bird or a fish, um, and that's to draw out. Uh, essentially, you're drawing out Thunderbolt. So it's really my favorite fish, like if you agree. <laughs> I actually saw Golduck use in the race this morning. Golduck, two of the three runners used Golduck, and I can't say I'd seen that before, but yeah. uh, hey, that a works fish great. and a bird at the same time, if you really think about it. I'm not going to really think about it, but I, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a Amy Eevee, I am definitely a Dodrio enjoyer. And in Pika, I am a Lapras enjoyer. And we're seeing how how smoothly this is going with uh, with the two C you know, just X X special attack with the support trainer turn one, X speed turn two, and then you're faster than, than both of these Gengars here. Um, and you're able to heal in the fight. You're also able to... Um, other, usually Eevee does not pick up the Aether, but you're also able to Elixir in the fight. So, um, you know, it is a time loss over just one seeing it, but you can mitigate that quite a bit by doing the menuing in the battle instead of outside of it. One thing to note with um, 2C Agatha as well is um, you use another X special attack and then you typically stall typically you stall both Gengars and the Golbat. He skipped the turnaround, you get about a six second time save. Um, here Etiquette didn't have enough uh, special attack to stall the Golbat, uh, so he had to Thunderbolt it, but the two Gengars he um, used stalled on. Saved about four seconds there compared to a one key Agatha where you get those turnarounds. Nice. Allo, meanwhile, uh, on the notorious Samuel fight, he's too seeing it. And I saw his Starmie was poisoned. Oh, maybe he forgot to heal it off of, um. Um. <laughs> Koga. I did miss that though, so if anyone in the chat um, saw where exactly you got poison, okay, I feel like if you got if you got top six by the Legion, you could probably take more damage than that. So yeah, not 100% sure what happened there, but uh, definitely we'll need to heal that before Giovanni, I'd say. Etiquette doing the standard 2C fight, which is you can tell by the fact that he's using 1C. Uh, <laughs> so he'll bring out this. He'll bring out the second controller right now. Um, essentially, you don't want your bird or fish or rapidash uh, to get hit by a hyper beam or hydro pump or whatever turn one. So you bring out the bird, fish, whatever uh, on turn two, and get rid of the Cedra, and you just bleed from here. Uh, and looks like Checking Matt got a pretty on... standard egg of the fight. Yep. Uh, oh, I was saying in chat that uh, the poison was from a miscooked scald on Nito. So yeah, the Nito would be the very first thing you fight in the gym. You need to psychic. And oh, yep. And kill it, so you can get poison there. Etiquette using Thunderbolt on the Gyarados, which is normally something you don't do uh, because you don't want the turnaround. But again, his special attack is not so great. So, uh, that's the decision there, and it's the right one. 
I'm curious to see if, um, Medicate will end up getting Psychic Rain on Dragonite. He'll also um, Drill Pack with the uh, Dodrio here, so even if it doesn't die, well, the Drill Pack will get the kill. Yeah, Just I, say, I, think this is a, I think this is a 15 and 16 on the Dragonite, so he should, should be okay, but to your point, the, the Dodrio should uh, clean anything up that needs to be cleaned up. And Dragonite goes down. Oh, oh! Oh! What is out going on, Cubs? I mean, what is happening there? What I did happened something there? Weird. I saw something weird happen on Gold Bat, but I was like, okay, I guess he's through. But I wasn't. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Did the Gengar outspeed or something, or did he misclick? Did he, did he not not use an X speed? That might have been I, it. I thought I saw him use the X speed at the start of the fight, though. That's why cause I I was watching his um, Arbok. And the Arbok looked fine to me, so that's why I kind of just looked away after that. It had looked like a pretty standard, um... Yeah, anyone Arbok. in chat who was, who was watching that, uh... Don't let us know. But yeah, Matt will unfortunately have to go back to the start of the Elite Four, and... Uh, do those first two fights in addition to Agatha again, uh, which will be quite a bit of a time loss for him, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Um, Dynam, shout out to Dynam who's on tech right now. Thank you, Dynam. Um, saying that he was using Thunderbolts on Golbat and Gengar. Um, either of those are misclicks, oh. or maybe, um, okay. maybe he doesn't have, like, a he piece of yielding item. Okay. Oh, there, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Geta. Oh. Meanwhile, etiquette on to champion. Um, totally not a fifth fight. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, again, this is just a safe fight from from his side. Looks like a rival just hyper potioned on him though, um, so he must have missed that missed a range there on on Pidgeot. Yeah, maybe he tried going for plus four psychic, which is a pretty good range for Pidgeot, but not guaranteed. But I didn't yeah. fully see it. Could have also gone for a plus two Thunderbolt as well. Again, still quite safe here I mean, with the, having the two C out. Even if something adverse were to happen to the star, you just you just revive it with the support trainer and you, you keep on going. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Owl on rival five. Um, ooh, this is something that you gotta keep in mind. If you do safe, if you do safe, uh, Giovanni, you need to remember to revive that. Uh, Yep. Grab a dash, or not, you're not going to be able to use it for this fight. I was going to try to see what he can do here. And this is the problem, is yeah. sand attack right there. I mean, uh, that, th this is very, very dicey. Uh, he's, he's trying to make it up with X items. Uh, Honestly, it problem, might work, honestly, if you can hit through work. the sand attack on everything. The problem is, if he doesn't get through the sand attack, uh, he's got... Uh, He's got Jolteon sitting there waiting for him, so... Uh, Vileplume, like long you hit... Vileplume for that matter. You need to hit this one, okay? It has pedal dang. You gotta hit this destroy one, you. and you gotta hit the one on Jolteon. Yep. Okay. We've got okay. one out of two. Hold. And also GG's to Edda. I uh, just GG. go into that. GG. End up with about a 306 there. Um... Uh, Considering no. he had... Oh, oh that was so close no. to actually working. Um, yeah, GG's to Etta. Um, as Allo will have to take that rival fight over again. Mm -hmm. um, 306, despite what was, frankly, a bad EV and a bad star. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's what you see out of a top runner. Still able to, even when you're, you're dealt a bad hand like that, um, able to go ahead and, and, and make the, the, the best of a bad situation. So nice job there. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, over on Matt, and uh, looking pretty low HP right now going to this Hitmonlee. Very rarely this Hitmonlee can use Faint, this is your priority move. So, we'll see if it happens here. Okay, again, very, very unlikely though. Yeah. 3644 for, for Atta. Uh, nice run there. And Hello. It looks like uh, Etiquette's joined us. Hey, Etiquette. Congrats Hello. on the run. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell us about it. I have nothing nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you got, uh, we were saying before you hopped on, you, you had a uh, an Eevee and a star of all time there. Uh, so you, you, you found your way through it. But yeah, yeah. it was not giving you, giving you a whole lot to work with. Yeah, it it was unfortunate because like before so i've been doing some like offline attempts all week um i've been on like some good paces and i've been basically just taking whatever eb i get uh and i've had a minus attack that did pretty well i had a minus speed that did pretty well and i was like i should know how to handle minus special if it comes up and then i got minus special and i instantly was like i don't know any ranges right now and so I spent the first hour to hour and a half of the run just doing calcs. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all those numbers I was throwing in chat, I didn't know those. I was just doing calcs mid run because I'm like, I am, is this safe? I don't know. And then I adjusted my shopping so I could buy an extra guard spec to do one controller rival three. And the whole thing was just, it worked. It was just, uh, <laughs> Hold out the spreadsheets. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then I'm like, finally, I'm done with this stupid EV, and I get into the stormy water, and I get a 10:26, and I'm like, oh no, it's over. And then, <laughs> I I do realize I can't complain about anything because I was watching the stream and Trub's got a like a <laughs> 1001, and I was like, I okay, I feel a little. And he, he ran from it. He ran I from know. It. I don't <laughs> blame him. <laughs> Yeah, um, I feel like... Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I was... Go for it. Yeah, I was uh, I was kind of talking a lot, that there were so many diff kind of different unique strats you were doing at the K, and I, I was just think, talking about how, um, you know, you have so many different strategies, you know, in Rock Tunnel, Rocket Hideout, that uh, not a lot of other runners do, uh, doing TC, and even, as you mentioned, just, like, routing things on the fly is something that I think that you're really skilled at. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's one of those things, and I couldn't use any of those stupid strategies because, like, one of them I really like is if you happen to hit 25, it works at 23 with some special attacks as well, but if you hit 25 before the Kangaskhan Trainer in Rock Tunnel, you can two-controller it and do X Special, X Special, Bouncy Bubble, Helping Hand, and that basically negates the need to heal, but you need good special, and I didn't have it. <laughs> um... I happened to get through the the Raticate fight without taking too much damage, anyways. But like, there's a lot of the stuff that I sort of planned for just didn't happen, and then it didn't help that I was trying to figure all this out and just getting bodied by things spawning in front of me. Oh, yeah. um, you, you got, yeah. At least a Zubat I saw. You, you kept getting, you kept getting encounters. Yeah, like some of them were definitely avoidable if my if I was fully focused on the game. It just. I wasn't, <laughs> so. But yeah, but um, again, I mean, that's for, for newer runners out there. That's that's the sort of you know you've you've played the game as long as you ha as etiquette has. You've seen some stuff, mm -hmm. um, and being able to calc on the fly and take what is other otherwise an unrunnable EV uh, for PP attempt purposes. And to take it and still get a 306. I mean, and, it, it, despite uh, some some really bad encounter luck, um, and then there was at least one situation where you know I saw the Geo the Geo two fight, you know the oopsie X attack instead of the X special attack, um, yep. being able to recalibrate there. So you know, it, hey, things go wrong in this run. So you, you yeah. did a great job. Of, bringing it back and now 
that mistake there using the X attack, I was like, all right, I'm all set to two controller because I couldn't two controller Samuel and do like the psychic stomp fight because my star just wasn't good enough. Um, oh no, sorry to interrupt etiquette. Oh. Uh, Matt oh, unfortunately no. gets crit by the Cedra oh, and he's gonna sucks. have to wipe again out of How's the... everyone doing tonight? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh my I'm gosh. Sorry, that is so painful. I, 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 I'm DNFing. I'm not gonna go through that again. That's that pain. Was, That's complete. That, that, that is, is so wow. unlucky, some of the stuff I... I wow. This was... This was a run of all time. Yeah. Certainly. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Just tell, tell between... us tell about it. I mean, between getting the bold nature uh, star or bold nature Eevee at the very beginning of the run and deciding to switch into my backup file um, that turned into a monster and special attack and absolutely no other IVs anywhere else. <laughs> um, bad catch route, bad movement, fat fingered a lot of places. You know, that's that's what cost me the the run in Agatha the first time is just. I fat fingered on uh, on uh, switching from T bolt to psychic on that last Gengar there, and just hmm. that's what cost it for me. Yeah, very unfortunate. I feel like one of the one of the things that really like went unfor like not great for you is that well, you got a really good route ten, and it seems like your catch route was was pretty you know doing pretty well there, and then you know no Zubat, no Ghastly. And suddenly you're you're really far behind on um, on catches. You have to do a lot of catches on rep 17. Although you did have that fossil backup, which came in clutch. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say it's, it's been a it's been a minute since I've seen an Omastar, but yeah, you, that was that was great to have. It, it's a it's something I've been practicing for uh, for the tournament this year is having that backup there. Um, and the reason the reason I did that is just from last year's tournament. I, I don't know if anybody else remembers, but like my last run in that tournament, I think I had like 27 pokes by the time I got to J and J three, and I was not going through that that torture again of like being low on catches plus every other bad thing in the in the run that could possibly happen, which unfortunately happened to, to me in this run, you know, quite a bit here and there, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, definitely took the, took a gamble on switching that star you, that first star you that I had switching to that, that second one that I had spawn after seeing it was a, a yeah. 1001. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That star me or that star you would have been rough to try to, to get through. I mean, even with the, <laughs> even with the, the, the star you had it, Unfortunately, ran into some, some trouble, but that 1002, that, that was a clutch move to notice that there was another star on screen and to pivot and say, look, I, this star is just going to lose me too much time. Um, so, I mean, again, the run didn't turn out the way you wanted it, but uh, you did some some really good things there. So, you know. Yeah, definitely, yeah I think I all of us on comms like... agreed with that. That was a great play to, um, to mm-hmm. switch to that other star. Speaking of great plays, uh, Alo doing uh, honestly a pretty nice Alexis skip there. Yeah, mm-hmm. would he, would he like to uh, when I I do my run here on Wednesday? Would he like to uh, uh, hand, <laughs> me to hand over my controller to him and and <laughs> have him do my Alexis skip as my Amazon enabled devices once again go off in my house? Uh, <laughs> I need to stop saying her name. I just need to call her a blank 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 blank. Uh, yeah, my Alexa skip on my tournament race is one of the ones of all time. <laughs> no, but no, it was I, I I I enjoy this run and everything. I mean, that's what that's why I think all of us keep coming back to it over uh, over time. But mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you you just draw the short straw and just go through a, a run of bad luck on a few runs in a row. And fortunately, that's kind of what I'm in right now at the the worst possible time. <laughs> Well, I think what we like about this run so much uh, that it's it's not the same run over and over again. It's a different run each time we see it. It also could be the source of frustration with this run, which is, well, gee, I ended up with 27 Pokemon after j and Oh, well, I got crit by Lance's Cedra. Like, 
you know, things that, you know, have a very small probability of happening or the RNG just not working out or what have you, um, it, it keeps us on our toes. So uh, it's fun to be like, oh, I'm not doing the same exact movements every single run. It's, so at least coming from my perspective, and I'm somebody who actually took this up after last year's tournament for that reason. I'm like, oh, this is not a typical speed run. This is, um, you know, it, it kind of keeps you coming back in, in that each run's a little different. So... Definitely, uh, definitely. Also, I, I'm looking at the notes here. That uh, that T bolt that I didn't kill on uh, Agatha there. That first that first attempt against her. That was a uh, 15 out of 16 range I missed. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> and then I get the one in 24 crit on the siege on last turn of setup. <laughs> oh, wow! It's one of yes. those. All you can do is laugh about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, like, like, it's not a Pokemon run if you don't get crit at the wrong time, you miss your 15 out of 16. But honestly, I, you know what? One of the great things about our format this year, you know, if this happened round one last year, it's like, okay, I gotta win my next, all my races now, or I'm out of here. With our format right here, you know, you have, a, you have a bad race, or, you know, bad race round one, didn't go the way you wanted, you still got a lot more chance to, to win some more races and rack up some points. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely, and, and GG's to Etiquette as well. That that was a great run. I didn't realize how close we were until uh, until I got knocked out by Agatha there, and I saw that you were on. I think you were on Lance at that point, and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I was I was like right there with him. Yeah, we were we were thinking you were yeah you I were uh... following along, and we're like, okay, maybe I can catch up. So yeah, you guys yeah. were really close there for a long time. I was yeah, I, I was the, trying uh, not had... to. Oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say I just had the little the the stream chat pulled up on the side, so like you know I was just kind of reading what was going on in the chat there, and you know outside of that I wasn't watching the stream or anything like that, just so I can focus on focus on what I was doing and you know trying to do the best of my ability there. Yeah, I I was kind of the opposite. I well I had chat open during like the boring parts like Nugget Bridge, but I was mostly trying to keep chat closed and just have the stream up for like. The big thing is trying to decide, am I doing safe end game or like standard? Um, and I'll say you were close enough at the end of Sylph that I was like, I need to do, I need to buy the items for normal end game just in case. Um, Cause it was like, all I needed to happen was like Caden to go kind of bad or, you know, Caroline to troll. And then we'd be like neck and neck. Um, and I think after after Geo 3, I felt fairly comfortable. Um, and then I had basically a, well, <laughs> basically a perfect victory road uh, luck-wise. I did miss the range on Naomi, um, but I accidentally, I was like trying to, I checked my special attack. I had 130. I was like, okay, I have to psychic the Lickitung. I have to psychic, psychic the Lickitung. My special attack's not good enough. I have to psychic the Lickitung. So turn one, I psychic the Lickitung, and it does half damage. And I'm like, crap, I did not X special. <laughs> so I had we, to summon We, we were wondering what, what happened there. That, yeah. That, that, that's yeah. Um, but otherwise, like, it, for me, it was just a lot of... A lot of just situations I hadn't been in before. Um, like I saw a Dynamin chat, I think it was, saying, didn't know that uh, Giovanni one's Rhyhorn had Megahorn, because I didn't hit that range. Uh, it has Megahorn? Apparently. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've missed that range before, but I've never seen Megahorn. Yeah. Uh, so, does the, and... so does the Rhyhorn in Giovanni's gym. That, that's not Giovanni's. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've accidentally hit Hydro Pump on that one and it's like, oh, there goes words of my health. Yeah. Um, and then I got super lucky. I got the two-turn Jesse and James fight with Rhyhorn. I saw my Rhyhorn leveled up. I think it was on Rival 4. And I saw a 60 attack. I'm like, oh, that's like the best Rhyhorn I've ever seen. Because um, usually I get like the 44 attack ones. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to make it work. And so my hideout went actually really well. And then... 
<laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh no, the goal bat on Archer is going to be a range. This is bad. And so what my plan was, was X special Glitzy Glow. X special Glitzy Glow gets rid of the wheezing. And then I'll helping hand, because I, I was still using Nidoking. I was like, as long as I'm healthy enough, I'll helping hand. And then I crit the wheezing turn one and it died. And I was like, ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was still three turns, but it was really funny. Yeah, speaking of hideout, uh, oh, okay. go ahead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention, uh, just keep us updated on what's going on with Aloe here. Uh, Aloe is through Lorelei and on to Bruno. So uh, I know we have uh, the, the rules of the tournament are uh, run needs to be 340 or shorter to not be a DNF. And right now, Aloe is on that pace. So. Uh, so, so good for them. Uh, hopefully we can keep this up with no more Elite Four shenanigans. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll tell you speaking what, of... Go ahead, Trev. I was going to say, I'll tell you what, I had the great catch routing for if I was running AOP today with the Kangaskhan in the first room. Oh my god, both <laughs> of you had Kanga all on three three at, the Kanga at the same time. I had all three Eevees chilling on Route 17 in that bottom patch of grass after the <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why do I not get this in AOP runs? There was maybe a 15 second span where both of you had Kanga on route on an Unrock Tunnel and then Owl got Chansey on Route 10. That oh was God. that was the wildest 15 seconds of this race for sure. I, I, I will say I was very sad that you had to repel that Kanga away immediately at us. Even though it was com kind of completely blocking your way, but I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to me. It was directly in my path, and I'm like, you know what? I'm getting rid of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, looks like Aloe's yeah, just wrapping up Bruno here. I did see Aloe pick up the full restore, so, um... Not sure if we're going to be seeing the one C Agatha here, or if we just picked it up as kind of a safety measure. Uh, it does kind of seem like Owl has been following kind of those uh, beginner notes, and at least in some places in this run. So, yeah. But a lot of credit to Allo. I mean, for for not having any PB up before the race started. Um, yeah, this will be. This will be a good building block going forward for the rest of the tournament, so really nice job here. I know that uh, Rival did not go according to plan, Rival 5 did not go according to plan, but, um, you know, again, took took that and is still going. Yeah, and that's such an easy mistake to make with uh, not reviving Rapidash after um, Giovanni, I mean, something that I've, I've I've come very close to doing on multiple occasions. Oh, yep, to pull it doing that. Oh, one thing I, that he's gonna try to do to see Agatha, but does not have a uh, bird or a fish here. Um, also, is not at full health. Yeah, um, I mean, you can go into cool. not full. Oh, wow. look at that. Wow, okay. Path of Legend. Yeah, let's go. Once, once again, once again, everyone's bingo card. Uh, at that point, at this point, you can uh, like triple or quadruple stamp that space. Yeah, I'm not sure what tax items um, I will have used. I would assume he used. He did us an X special attack, and he's going to do an X speed here. That's perfect that, play right that'll, here. That'll, yeah, that'll take care of it. Yeah, should hopefully go pretty smoothly from here. He already has the, the special in speed up. Not sure if you're gonna use uh, another special and try to do skip turnaround, or just gonna get a psychic. Uh, either way, it's fine. And yeah, looks like he's gonna be making it through here now. Outside of battle. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah, he's ready to go.
Yep, and I guess at this point you can probably just keep Rapidash in the party. Um, I'm not sure, maybe he'll just switch out to something else if he feels more comfortable with, with that, but either way is fine. Rapidash is interesting. A for the end game, just because it. I don't know if I does just... live. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it does live a hit on, like the the main one of the main reasons to use Dodrio, aside from the fact that it baits out the right Pokemon on Agatha, is it's not bulky enough. It's frail enough that it could die to one Air Slash um, on Champion. But in Pikachu, you don't necessarily want that because a lot of times you have to go to plus six, and if uh, Air Slash KOs something turn one, then you're kind of in trouble. Um, don't have enough time, basically, to set up. Interesting there. I, I don't think I've ever seen Golbat show up last. If they see, so, they got Gengar, Gengar, and then Golbat. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, when you're doing two controller fights, there is some randomness in the, the send-out order. So probably that randomness combined with the fact that you don't normally have Rapidash out for that fight mm -hmm. probably contributed to that. Yeah, it it basically uses it goes through it it picks a Pokemon on the opposing side. So in this case, it would be Starmie or Rapidash, and then it goes. So that's the 50/50. If we ever say it's a 50/50, that's what it is. Yep. Um, and then it'll go through every Pokemon's move set and say which one has the best move power against that Pokemon. And so the reason why you want a bird or a fish is because um, Weezing is actually the fourth Pokemon in the in the turn order, um, but has Thunderbolt. And so it'll see Thunderbolt as being the best move against Starmie and the best move against like Dodrio. And it will want to send that out first instead of Golbat or Gengar or Golbat. Um, and so when you get to the end of the uh, party order, it will say um, it, it probably just has a better best move. It has a different best move against each of the two Pokemon. Um, so that's why you'll sometimes see Marowak turn two on Rival 5, and sometimes you'll see Vileplume, because Vileplume is best against Starmie, but Marowak is best against Rapidash. Okay. And that's why it's very bad to use something like Aerodactyl as your ride Pokemon there, because it will see Jolteon or Raichu as being best against Aerodactyl, and then you don't have your uh, X speed up yet. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's that's helpful. Yeah. Hello, checking his way through um, plants. Uh, I believe he's not 140 special attack, so we'll need to probably just use Stomp if he doesn't uh, hit the Psychic Range here. There you go. That's why you, that's one of the benefits of 2C. Yep. You was able to be full health for that uh, Dragonite there, and the guy that was able to live the outrage. Yep. One more fight left for Aloe. One more fight, and he's got and he's got ten minutes to do it. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this one. I'm feeling good about it. Uh, yeah, just gotta just gotta heal. Oh, one thing I did notice, I actually never brought this up, but I did notice it, um, Matt, that you swap, what is it, you swap the map to the very first slot in your bag? Yeah. Yeah, is that something, I remember we used to do that a really long time ago, and then we kind of stopped doing that, I don't, is that something you kind of always done? That's something. So the first run I ever did for Let's Go was an AOP was an AOP run, and it was some old. I think they were old etiquette notes that had that that swap with oh, yeah. the that town great. map into slot yeah. one, Pokemon box in slot two, and candies in slot three. And it's something I just I got used to setting it up that way. And I don't. It probably doesn't save any time if much at all. But it's something where it's just such a, a habitual thing now to just set it in that order. 
that if I try and run it outside of that order, I'm making mistakes like when I'm trying to do my fly menu instead of going, I'm going into the Pokemon box and that type of stuff. So it's just one of those habitual things I just do at the beginning of the run now. Yeah, it's kind of like move orders where it's like yep. once you get used to one move order, it's hard to switch. This could be good really man. good for Owl as long as he knows how to play it here. Just needs to know to use that uh, X special on Vile Plume while he just shoulder beam, and uh, he should be golden. Yeah, the uh, the move order thing. I so right before we made the change in EV to like not have Buzzy Buzz anymore through Hideout, I went through and I figured out. I was like, all right, this move order. Using like the standard versions of a fight, this move order is like two inputs better. And so I was like coming back to the game, so I didn't have much muscle memory. So I just like rolled with it. Um, and then, you know, Etchy did the reroute with the keeping Sizzly slide instead of uh, Buzzy Buzz. Instead of, buzz, instead and, of using the. And the now, it does, now it doesn't matter, but I'm just so used to it. Uh, it looks like our. Ooh. X special here. I don't know if they slam. He's got, he's got X special defense up, but he's about to get solar beamed. Oh, oh wait, he needs to heal though. He needs to heal that. Wow. He's got poke attack. Oh. He needs to heal that. Oh, now, he's got to heal this off. You have to heal it. There are multiple have to heal. Pokemon that have quick attacks, so he's got to okay, heal wait, this wait. off. If he heals it here, it should be fine. Cause if he heals it here, then Goldtrum will just go for quick attack. Right, 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 right. Under. Right. But he has to heal it here. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Do it, do it, do it. And that's what's done. Quick yep. attack? It should be quick attack. There's no way it thunders here. Okay, right. yeah. <laughs> and now you can just go. Perfect. There we go. Nice. Wow, that was so clutch on to live there. I mean, <laughs> Solar Beam in this game, they. Upped it to 200 base power for some stupid reason. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that's you're you're not normally. I mean, other than Path of Legends, I, I'm just absolutely rocking that part of the bingo card today. Uh, you are not living Solar Beam. Not a, not a 200 power attack. Yep, just a uh, Thunderbolt on on Slowbro and then it's uh, GG. Yes. There we go. He did before Yee this run, and Yay. guess what? He's got one now. We got a 335 nice job, there. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations on, on, on finishing it out under the 340 threshold. Yeah, we'll see if he, uh, if he joins in. I know uh, he's part of our French connection. Uh, that's has a number of entrants into this tournament. So uh, we'll see if he he's he's comfortable answering a question or two. Um, say I know it's it's about three in the morning his time there. Yeah, so. I was gonna say there's that there's that <laughs> too. Yeah, it's totally fair if they don't want to join. side note uh, uh this humble commentator is, is doing this for the first time and i just want to i just want to say how much fun this was and that's time on aloe how much fun this was uh, so thanks uh thanks amber and greta for for sharing this with me and, and thanks to the runners too and and of course uh uh for tech as well and i think i saw uh aloe is is on hey how's it yep. going uh, pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> understandable. Yeah, I really need to work on yeah many portion. If it's not all of them, but still learning, so that's good. Yeah, I think you did great. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on finishing. Yes. Yeah, that was hard to not uh, DNF, but yeah, I needed to to finish the run anyway, so. And that yeah. would be my PB to beat 
for the next round. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all we all had a little bit of a scare there on on champion seeing that. Uh, uh, that was team. the first time I got this scenario, so I didn't know what to do. And I I scrolled the the notes down, and I've seen if rapidage is crit and die, XP def and X at expect again. But that's not what we're supposed to do, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I know that there's a lot of kind of different branches that you can happen there. But yeah, on, on, on that scenario, because um Rapid Ash pretty much doesn't like the only grass move it has is solar beam. So you can just X special there and then it will charge the solar beam and then just mm -hmm. kill it after. Vile Plume has Solar Beam. What Pokemon did I say? You said Rapidash. Oh. <laughs> Rapidash does not have Solar Beam. <laughs> that would be <laughs> terrifying if Fire Horse had Solar Beam. <laughs> but yeah, GG's out well. Thanks. Thanks for the commentary too. It was good to, to listen to the stream while I was running. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun sitting in this chair. So, I, again, thank you. Thank all three of you runners. Thank you to Tech. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun. Uh, and as somebody who watched the tournament last year to gain inspiration to do it this year, uh, it, it sure is fun being a part. So for those of you who are just out there watching, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we hope you become part of the community and pick it up. This is it's just a lot of fun being here. Mm hmm Yeah, shout out to, ev to everyone, uh, all the runners, tech, and uh, to Greta commenting, but especially you, Pokétex. Uh, I know we had talked a little bit after the tournament last year. I'm really excited that you, you joined this year and really excited to commentate with you. It was a great time, so thank you so much. Yeah, you were great. Uh, let's, let's do this again. This was, uh, this was so much fun, and uh, <laughs> I, you know, good way to spend a fun Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Yep, so I think um, we're going to just talk about uh, a few of the upcoming races. Um, so I... Is, are these the last three races of the these round? These are the last three. Yeah. They are. These are the last three, yes. All right. So we don't have a race for a couple of days, but next one is going to be happening on, on June 4th. We have the Reset Gold Headstrong versus Iron versus Zexo. If you have not been in the Discord seeing Yaxo's improvement over the past few days, Yaxo has gone from about a 3-2x to what, like a 306 or something like that? 308. Yeah, 308. Yeah, 310 is, 310s are for the birds, man. That is, <laughs> that is sensational what he's been able to do. So, I mean, that's going to be one. All three of those runners have times that last year would have been pot one. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that one for sure. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. And then next up the next day at 3 p.m. Eastern, we're gonna have T Pat versus Furious versus JLF. T Pat recent sub three runner. Um been running Let's Go for a few years now. It's gonna be great. Furious, uh the our, our main tech person is gonna be there as well. Yeah, Furious um, like the reason anything is happening right now. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Shout for sure. out. <laughs> He's still like kind of running finished. everything behind the scenes. And then we got um, JLF. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe JLF is another front runner who is learning for the tournament. I believe that's correct. So I'm going to be excited to see um, him there. And then the final race we have is going to be Randall versus Pokétax versus Burner. Uh, Poke Attack is going to be your very first tournament race. You excited? I, I am. I'm also partially terrified. Um, uh, it, it, but, you know, look, it, just being a part of this, like, this is, that's a win by itself. I, I watched this tournament last year. It wasn't really all that engaged with the community. Uh, but I was like, I want to run this thing. I got to see this thing. So uh, being able to, you know, start a run and, and not stumble all over myself that that'll be a win in, in and of itself <laughs> yeah good luck thank you appreciate it all right any final words from anybody you're all cool
yeah just uh thanks for watching thanks for everyone participating um it's really cool just to see everyone playing let's go again i missed this this was a lot of fun, <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah thanks again well, everyone we'll yeah we'll see you all thank tuesday you. we're excited for excited for more <laughs>